Hello, Dr. Bala. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome, welcome. I'm fine. How are you, you, Dr. Bala? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, please welcome, welcome to our uh, virtual webinar. Yeah, thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Hello, Dr. Thank yeah, you, nice. thank you, yeah. inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are webinar. you? Welcome, yeah, welcome. Thank you. I'm fine. How uh, are you? Can you please Bala? wait for uh, you, another you, uh, you, five yeah. to ten Please minutes, welcome, sir? welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, yeah, virtual thank you, thank webinar. You so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Hello, Dr. Thank yeah, you. Nice. Thank you for uh, inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. I'm fine. How are uh, you? Can you please you, wait Bala? for uh, you, another you, uh, five yeah. to ten please minutes? Please welcome. Sir? Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, virtual thank you, thank webinar. Ma, you so much. Ma, yeah, thank, you, thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, virtual webinar. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank welcome. you. I'm fine. How are uh, you? Can you please wait for uh, you, another you, uh, five yeah. to ten minutes? Please welcome. Sir? Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm fine. How are you? Can you please wait for another five to ten minutes? Please welcome. Welcome to our yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you so much. Ma, you need to pay. Dear delegates, we welcome you all to the International Webinar 2021 organized by Department of Microbiology, DKM College for Women, Vellore.
Excellencies, colleagues, and my dear students, thank you all for joining this virtual international webinar, January 2021, organized by PG and Research Department of Microbiology, DKM College for Women, in conjunction with DKMC In Vivo Club, sponsored by Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology, entitled "Sustainable Alternate for Replacing Plastics to Avoid the Effects of Plastic Pollution." The theme of the webinar is related to the most alarming environmental issue, the sustainable alternate for plastic, which will be of a great use for the betterment of the global environment. We do our best when we do it together. So this is a good step in the right direction to forge synergy between all of us for one goal we want to achieve. Let's begin the event with a formal welcome address by the head of PG and Research Department of Microbiology. Dr. A. Vidya Ma'am. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues, friends, and dear students. Good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of the audience of the international webinar, sustainable alternatives for replacing plastic to avoid effects of plastic pollution. It is a great honor for me to express my warm welcome to our President, Dr. P. Shivakumar Sir, Respected Secretary Sir, Engineer D. Maninathan, and esteemed Principal, Dr. P. N. Sudha Madam, who are the supporting pillars and encouragers in all aspects. It is my pleasure to welcome our distinguished guest, Dr. Ramasamy Rajesh Kumar, Senior Scientific Researcher, Institute of Nuclear Agricultural Sciences, College of Communication and Biotechnology, Jiantian University, China. Your acceptance of our invitation to be a guest speaker is most greatly acknowledged. I would also like to welcome the heads, faculty members, principal scholars, and students from our own college and from other colleges and universities. The main purpose of the webinar is to find a sustainable alternative for replacing plastic to avoid the effects of plastic pollution. It is an opportunity, time to exchange ideas, to renew context, and discuss problems of. Mutual interest with high level experts of international and European level. The research of this talk will be the benefit of the students, researchers, and society. Our wish is that you take back with you knowledge, experiences, contact, and happy memories. Your suggestions and feedback are most welcome to shape us. Once again, welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. With this suitable note, it's a great honor for me to invite our respectful principal, ma'am, Dr. P. N. Sudha, to deliver the presidential address. Please, ma'am. Uh, a very hearty and uh, pleasant good afternoon to one and all present in this uh, webinar. On behalf of DKM College, I welcome you all to this. Uh, International webinar, which was uh, sponsored by Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology, and uh, conducted by the Department of Microbiology, DKM College, along with DKMC Engineering Club. I heartily welcome Dr. Rajesh Kumar, who is a senior scientific researcher in the College of Agriculture and Biotechnology uh, in uh, Jiang University, China. And also Dr. V. Balasubramanian, Assistant Professor, Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University, Raipur, Chhattisgarh. And the topic of uh, this international seminar is sustainable alternative for replacing plastics to avoid the effects of plastic pollution. People uh, every time they tell that plastic is harmful uh, to human beings. But without plastics, nothing can happen. That is the actual truth. But what we can do to make it a sustainable, or to make a prepare a sustainable alternative to the available plastics which are harmful to the human being and also for the animals. Now, plastics uh, usually what we are using are derived from petrochemicals or by the polymerization of uh, some uh, chemically modified monomers. And these uh, chemically prepared polymers are uh, non-biodegradable 
and they are toxic to uh, human and animal and they cause uh, various uh, pollutions plastic pollutions which affect uh, uh, starting from the animals to uh, the animals which are present in the ocean and also the human beings so there are a lot of uh, large number of uh, alternate that are available that are researched uh, for the available plastics which are basically we can call them as bioplastics and uh, anything that is derived from biological uh, organisms or biological uh, materials like uh, plants they are found to be very good for human and animals because they are biodegradable and they are in they can work in conjunction with uh, the biological organisms so there are large number of uh, bioplastics that are in use even in uh, uh, previously uh, in medical field many uh, plastics were used which are derived from petrochemicals but uh, slowly it is now being reduced and uh, people go for some bioplastics we can uh, take the example of uh, the biopolymers that are used in uh, medical field like the various uh, 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 chitosan chitosan related materials in which uh, we are working on and also other uh, biopolymers which uh, have a biological origin either from uh, ocean or from plants and uh, apart from that uh, we have other uh, biological polymers for example we can take the rice the starch the bio starch that is present bioplastic starch that is uh, prepared by boiling the starch it is a very good polymer which can be used as a coating material in various uh, uh, materials uh, where now uh, actually nylon and other materials are used so in the place of such uh, materials we can go for uh, the bio plastic that is uh, the uh, bio starch so like that there are large number of alternatives which are available to replace this uh, petrochemical plastics the only problem is we have not uh, found out 100% uh, replacement which is uh, not it achieved but there is lot of scope for research in this area so that we can save mother earth and also the animals and human beings so with this uh, small note i wish to uh, thank the opportunity given by the department of uh, microbiology and also the dkmc enviro club to join in this uh, webinar and i also welcome all the participants uh, to uh, be present and uh, make use of uh, the insights that are given by the two scientists and uh, a short note about dkmc enviro club actually dkmc enviro club is uh, practice is there for the past 15 years and uh, we actually practice 100% uh, uh, removal of uh, solid waste that is zero solid waste management is being practiced within our campus and we have uh, uh, we are just sensitizing our students on this uh, um, pollution free campus so this is uh, the work that is by, uh, done by the dkms in viro club and i am very happy that i am a part of it uh, thank you so much for the opportunity given thank you once again thank you very much ma'am thank you so much with all your with your blessings and support uh, we are conducting this conference thanks a lot ma'am now let me invite once again the convener of this event dr vidya ma'am to introduce our first speaker dr ramasamy rajesh I, I feel very much pleased to introduce Dr. Ramaswamy Rajesh Kumar to all the participants of the webinar. He is a senior scientific researcher in the Institute of Nuclear Research. Apna question. Apna unga questions kya kumi? College of Biotechnology, Jiajiang University, PR China. He has done his B.Sc. Microbiology in 2003 from University of Madras, M.Sc. Biotechnology in the year 2005 in Bardia University, Trichy. and pg diploma in bioinformatics in the year 2006 mphil biotechnology in the year 2007 in periyar university salem and he has completed phd in the year 2012 in the bardiar university trichy and mba in 2015 and now he is pursuing llb in anamale university chidambaram india he has completed three post docs from various universities in china and korea and he has good teaching experiences uh, he has worked as assistant professor in the department of biotechnology lovely professional university punjab worked as associate professor and head department of biotechnology st joseph university nagaland india 
worked as assistant research professor college of agriculture and life science uh, south korea worked as lecturer department of bioinformatics jamal mohammed college trichy tamil nadu he is a good entrepreneur also worked as uh, the managing director in genpro innovative thoughts chennai worked as md uh, in ipro technologies trichy uh, working as md and senior scientist in sin biogenica private limited pondicherry he has more than 25 publications and he has given many tv interviews uh, notably in news 7 channel makkal tv and malai murasu he has been as an invited speaker for many international and or national conferences he has organized um, 21 conferences and webinars so far and he is also uh, have membership in many professional bodies he has received uh, many awards or awards and honors uh, uh, some uh, which are uh, more specific is uh, he has uh, awarded world environmental day hero in the year 2019 by united nations and he has uh, received prize for outstanding contribution in the year 2017 by nangai university china young scientist award 2015 from decon environmental research organization bijapur karnataka best research paper award in april 2011 by asian journal of experimental biological sciences awarded junior research fellowship by ugc mhrd government of india awarded jrf life sciences research board from drdo ministry of defense government of india so he is the apt for the person to deliver the lecture today on the suitable alternate for the plastics i welcome you once again sir welcome you for the session thank you thank you ma'am now dr rajesh will take over the session Dr. Rajesh, am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible, sir. Okay. Yeah, you Can are audible. Can you see my screen? No. Uh, one second. Is my screen is visible now? Yes, sir. Can you see my screen, my slides? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. uh thank you uh, the organizing secretary dr hema priya ma'am and uh, i'm very glad to be uh, one of the speaker of this international webinar on sustainable alternative uh, alternate for replacing plastics to avoid the effects of uh, plastic pollution as the principal ma'am uh, dr sudha i guess like you know she has given like a wonderful explanation about what could be the uh, what could be the like you know uh, the real alternative for the petrochemical plastics as she mentioned like you no know, there are like plenty of plant based and also like you no know, uh, like i could say in general like biogenic based uh, there are so many uh, petrochemical uh, alternative yeah. petrochemical plastics there are plenty of things are like you know going around the world but anyhow the the percentage of the bioplastics is very uh, less when comparing to uh, the mm -hmm. number of like you know, the petrochemical plastics as we are like you no know, started using day to day life and uh, uh you know uh, we can see like plenty of like plastics in uh, in our houses as well like you know we can say there won't be any houses without having any plastic products so that kind of like uh, it became a uh, important part of our day to day life and uh, so you can also like see uh, in any kind of like not only uh, to uh, uh, like you no know, at uh, home even like you know so the clothes that we are wearing and uh, the pen or the uh, what are the things like even the chairs in the classrooms and also you can see uh, the food which we like you know get back from uh, uh take out you know so that also like contain uh, the plastics so so plastics became uh, one of the like you know day to day uh, material in our life so uh, it is also like you know becoming uh, um, uh, very difficult to like avoid but anyhow like you know so there is a way to like you know find an alternative to this kind of like you know the petrochemical products uh, i mean petrochemical plastics and uh, we have to like you know find the Uh, how to like uh, uh, make it uh, usable for our like you know well being and also like for uh, not only for our well being also like we need to concern about the environment because the recent days we could like you know witness lots of like you know climate changes are happening around the world and also we could witness like uh, there are like lots of issues happening because of like you know the environmental pollution and uh, you can witness lots of dolphins and also other living uh, 
uh, my, I mean, like marine living organisms are like getting dead and also like floating in the shores of the like you know I mean the sea in the ocean okay so why I am like you know uh, 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 plan to give about the bioplastic the reason is like you know, so we need to find an alternative uh, way to like you know make some uh, a convenient way of like you know product that can be alternate to the plastics but it could act as a uh, same similar like you know uh, the plastic which we are like you know, using these days all right Okay, so uh, I am the founder of The Voice, the Voice of Indian Council for the Environment, and uh, we do have like network from uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, and um, uh, we do have like volunteers. And if anybody is interested to join our organization, you are like no, uh, most welcome to join our organization. The membership is totally free, and those who want to conduct like any kind of like you know awareness program in your region, so we love to like you know uh, support you for that kind of like you know program to conduct in at your region or in your village, I could say, anywhere in India. All right, so you have witnessed these kind of like products at your home, actually, like you know, so anything, whatever you take at your home, there will be the plastic. Like if you go to kitchen, you can find the plastic. If you go to your writing table, you can find a pen in plastic. And if you want to sit somewhere, like, you, know, you can find the plastic chairs. Even like, you know, what are these like footwears that you're wearing must contain the plastic. So plastic became, yeah, important uh, material or important uh, 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 thing for in our like you no know, uh, day-to-day life okay so let's see like you know so how the plastics have been like invented like you know, so plastic have been invented 100 years ago and uh, so what we are using is like you know uh, multi-talented durable cost-effective and uh, easy to process and also impervious to water and enable like you know, lots of applications like you know so what are the things that we want to do so we can do all those things with this plastic so plastic is became a important role or like you know important material in our life okay so plastic contains like lots of polymers and uh, also contains additives uh, which set as uh, uh, sets the plastic to give the hardness and also gives the density for the material and also a thermal uh, insulation uh, to avoid the heat uh, to get melt uh, uh, the plastic and also for electrical isolation and also primarily uh, the resistance to heat especially for like you no know, organic solvents oxidation and also uh, microorganisms so so plastic used for these reasons so there are like you no know, 100 different types of like plastics or like you no know, uh, used in different uh, grades actually so that is from like low viscosity like you no know, polypropylene pp uh, for injecting molding and also we do have like high viscosity uh, polypropylene uh, that is uh, for extrusion and also mirror fill like grades. So we could see the annual production of uh, the synthetic polymer, the plastic is like, you know, uh, from the petrochemicals like exceeds more than 300 million tons. So every year, like, you know, so we are like, you know, using 300 million tons of like, you know, uh, plastic. And what happens after like, you know, using these plastics, like, you know, end up in the environment and uh, make lots of uh, environmental problems and also uh, it uh, like you know uh, gives like lots of uh, problems to our human life. Okay, so there are like you no know, natural occurring plastic materials can be found in the form of like you know animal bones contains uh, uh, naturally fo found like you no know, uh, plastic, uh, and also the horns of the deers or any kind of like you no know, uh, big animals, and also the tortoise shells also has the naturally occurring plastic, and also from the amber that is the, the resin from the pine trees, and the egg uh, the albumin also contains the plastic. And the sap from the various tropical trees and the wax uh, from the honey bees, you know, the honey bees, uh, like you no, know, uh, from there actually we can get the wax. Actually, from wax also we prepare lots of uh, plastic materials. And these are like considered as a natural uh, occurring like you know polymers uh, that we use today. And also the one of the more important like you know uh, plastic is the casein, which is derived from milk, and uh, still that we are using it for like you know manufacturing like you know, the, the buttons that we are using for our like you no. Know, apparels okay let's see like about the uh, uh like how the plastics are made actually like uh, plastics are made by means of like you know polymerization okay so so how the uh, uh the polymerization occurs okay so the uh if you want to understand like you know how plastic is made uh and uh, why certain types of plastics are suitable for some uses because like we cannot like use all the plastics for like all purpose uh, for example, for kitchenware, like we we should like use uh, a different kind of plastics uh, because uh, we are going to keep our food in that. So the purpose of using the plastic is something different. So 
for every purpose there, there there are different kind of class that you are using for day to day life okay and uh, yeah so to understand about the little structure of the polymers uh, polymers are like large molecules uh, made up of uh, many smaller uh, molecules uh, and the poly means you know uh, as actually we are studied in biochemistry like on you know, the polypeptides okay and uh, uh, and also like molecular biology like you know so you would have uh, studied then you may know about like you know many peptides supposed to either to make the protein so the polypeptides okay the poly means many and mer means the units okay uh, these smaller units are like uh, called uh, monomers uh, mono means single that is one and mer meaning is a unit okay we can say as a unit uh, that can be joined together uh, through a uh, polymer session to form uh, polymers okay uh, a polymer contains uh, hundreds of thousands of monomers so it is uh, like you know bundle of monomers okay and uh, yeah polymer session which means uh, uh, linking of uh, these monomers here so you can see there are these are the monomers through polymerization like you know so we combine all these monomers together and uh, we link the monomers to form polymers uh, and um, which results in uh, two kinds of chemical reaction uh, one is called uh, uh, condensation and uh, the another one is called addition okay so polymers uh, uh, fall into like you no know, different kind of uh, uh, groups and uh, more important is the thermosetting plastics and thermoplastic which we'll like uh, uh, see in, uh, in in the next slides okay and uh, thermosetting polymers are converted into their final form uh, by heat and once we set it cannot be like you know softened by uh, by further heating okay and thermoplastic however like uh, can be softened and become uh, fused or like you now become a moderate heating and uh, we can like harden them again by making it cool this process can be repeated many times and without radically altering uh, uh, the uh, thermoplastic properties okay uh, so in a monomer uh, there are atoms are joined uh, by double bonds uh, like uh, in the dna you can see we do have a uh, uh, bonding together so okay uh, and this must be like a broken and new bonds uh, created between adjacent uh, atom to form the uh, long chain molecules of a uh, polymer uh, through this uh, polymerization okay so the word plastic itself uh, uh, come from the Greek word uh, plasticos, uh, which means to be able to um, uh, shape or molded by means of temperature, like the heat, okay, for thermal. Uh, thermal. Okay, so you can read here this is like you know, poly, oxy, benzyl, methylene, glycol, uh, glycol, anhydride, okay. So this is very hard to read, but uh, the exact uh, term uh, for this is uh, uh, the backlight, okay. So the, uh, the first plastic made from this synthetic compound is called the backlight. This is the first uh, plastic which was made in this world. Okay, uh, it is a thermostatic phenol, uh, formal, uh, formally resin, uh, formed from a condensation uh, reaction of uh, phenol and uh, formaldehyde, and uh, it was developed by the Belgian American chemist uh, Leo Backland in Yonkers, New York, in the year 1907. Okay, and uh, and it was patterned in the year, uh, I mean, in uh, in the year 199, December 7. So you have uh, you can see this telephone actually like uh, if I've gone to some museum and those who are like you know the old people actually they might uh, know the material uh, very easily because uh, this uh, telephone is made up of the backlight and also we would have witnessed in the like if you go to some old buildings or like you know if you go to some old houses you could witness this kind of like you know switch boxes okay so this is a tumbler switch box uh, which is made up of backlight still like you can uh, see the quality of this backlight material uh, it's a uh, very long lasting. Okay, let's see what are the types of uh, plastics are there. So there are like you no, know, we can uh, differentiate plastic into like seven different types, uh, and um, the first one is like you know PET that we use to uh, consume water, like you know the uh, mineral water we could say, it's like uh, Pepsi and the Horlicks, and uh, so this kind of like you no know, comes uh, in this like you no know, PET bottle. And the next one is HDP, that is uh, you can uh, witness in the shampoo and also the detergent. Uh, liquid okay and the pvc the pipes which is used for like you know pumping water uh, from one place to another place and the ldp that is the uh, carry bags that we are that we are using and the uh, pp that is a uh, polypropylene and uh, this is uh, used for like you know uh, keeping the curd or ice creams okay this kind of things will come in the polypropylene and this is a polystyrene this is like you know take out foods actually what are the Take a food that we are like you know taking from the restaurants that is made up of this uh, polystyrene material, 
and others uh, like uh, we can say it's kind of like a mixed kind of materials uh, that is like you know we can uh, take an example of the compact disc and uh, the 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 big uh, uh, container of like you no know, mineral water which we are like you know, getting from outside okay so these are the seven uh, common types of like you know uh, plastics and uh, we can uh, differentiate these uh, different types of plastic based upon their toxicity okay and uh, the way they are like you no know, that we are using it for like negative you know, life okay so here you can see the toxic code is like low to the higher the higher is the polyvinyl chloride that is a pvc so uh, so this is has a, a very dangerous material because it contains a benzene carbon and a tetrachloride and we want to dichloroethene and uh, taplate ethylene oxide uh, lead chromate methyl acetate methanol thallic and hydride uh, tetrahydrofuran and uh, tribasic lead sulfate mercury cadmium and bisphenol a okay this this is, this is bpa and uh, you can see here the mercury and also um, and another one the most dangerous material in this is like lead material okay so these are the toxic materials present in this polyvinyl chloride this pvc material so this is this material is considered as a highly toxic material and remaining based upon their uses okay so the low one is the polypropylene that i mentioned here the polypropylene that uh, uh, we used to get uh, the milk, uh, I mean, like a curd or uh, the ice creams, okay? And these things, like, no, comes in this kind of, like, no, uh, containers. So this is a, a very least uh, low toxicity. Should I cannot say uh, least, actually, it's a low toxicity when compared to other materials. Whereas the the high density poly, uh, polyclean, okay, the, 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 this one, actually, HDP, okay? So this is a, a kind of, like, no, a, a moderate uh, toxic, toxicity. And uh, you can see the low uh, density, like you no know, uh, LDP, low density polyethylene, which we used for uh, carrying, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, shop. If we, we can say the shopper, so which we can carry uh, things from shops to home, and also uh, food packing uh, this wrapper, uh, the the saran. Okay, this is called like saran. The saran is also a kind of like you no know, plastic material, so it's a LDP. It's a low density polyethylene. However, it is uh, toxic when compared to uh, the uh, this is uh, the low one like the polypropylene. All right, so let's see what are the uh, different uh, classification of plastics. Okay, so there are like you no know, uh, uh, natural plastics, uh, semi-synthetic plastic, uh, synthetic plastics, uh, thermoplastic, thermosetting plastics. Let's see what is natural uh, plastic. Okay, so natural plastics is from the pine tree. That is as I mentioned in the previous slide. Okay, this is from the uh, amber. Uh, this material is called amber. That is uh, from the pine tree resin. And uh, it is often used in the jewelry uh, 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 making. And the second one is a semi-synthetic plastic uh, that is made up of uh, uh, cellulose acetate. Um, uh, you know, the cinema making film, actually the role, the cinema making role actually, which is made up of this kind of uh, semi-synthetic plastic. And uh, synthetic plastic is, is uh, um, uh, this is made up of uh, different kind of like, you know, petrochemical uh, materials like uh, uh, crude oil, uh, coal or gas, okay. So this is a kind of a material which is uh, generally done in uh, petrochemical reference under heat and pressure. And it is the first of uh, manufacturing process that is required to produce most of our present day and commonly occurring plastics. So we do use the synthetic plastic that is made from the petrochemical refineries. Okay, uh, this one is a thermoplastic, uh, softened and uh, formed after uh, like you no know, uh, heating it. And uh, the, when you apply the uh, heat again, the material will get uh, softened. And uh, the best example, acrylic, uh, sterine, uh, probably the most common plastics found in the school workshop. So you can notice in the school workshop, they used to keep this kind of plastics for like, you know, they can heat it once like, you know, soften that will like, you know, uh, it will, it can like, you know, make it a different kind of like, you know, uh, uh, shape. Okay. You can change it to any kind of shape. And these uh, thermosetting plastics are uh, uh, softened when heated and can be molded when it's soft, but uh, when it gets cooled, it cannot be, uh, it, it can be like not set into molded any kind of shape, but when heat is applied, that will not soften again. So, so it once you like set this material, so that cannot be like you no know, reset again. So it will remain in the same form. So how uh, the, the same uh, uh, like shape, what, what you have made. So the, the porous resin used with glass uh, reinforced plastic work is the best example of uh, this uh, thermosetting plastic. And uh, the most modern plastic derived from natural materials such as uh, oil, uh, coal, and natural gas with uh, 
crude oil remaining the most important raw material for the this production okay and the starting point for the production uh, process like you know uh, as, as a chemist uh, simple chemical process that is a uh, distillation uh, as it is in the petrochemical refineries and uh, the raw material into uh, different fractions okay so that is made into like different uh, uh, parts okay so here are the some of the uh, different uh, plastics uh, uh, like a uh, commodity plastic a standard plastic and the engineered plastic so we can see one by one there are like uh, different types okay the polyamides that is nylons which is used for fishing line and also the machine parts such as the engine parts and gun frames are made up of this polyamide polycarbonate that is um, eye glasses and the rear shield these are the best example and also the traffic lights uh, is made up of uh, this polycarbonate and polyester that is uh, the, the the apparel that will I mean, uh, mostly like you know uh, the uh, cold areas actually the winter uh, uh, areas actually the people used to wear the polysters that materials are like fibers and uh, such textiles and polyethylene that is as I mentioned before this piece has like two different polyethylene that is one is a high density polyethylene and this is a, another is a low density polyethylene and the uh, the last one is the pet actually the the the, the water bottles which we carry is made up of this material and the uh, polypropylene that is a uh, we can say the drinking straws and uh, the yogurt containers. Okay, these are made up of this polypropylene. And polyesterines, like you now, uh, this food containers and uh, plastic tablewares, uh, like disposal uh, cups, plates, cutlery, compact discs, and cassette boxes. Okay, these uh, materials are made up of, like uh, as I mentioned earlier, these materials are made up of all refineries, actually, like from the oil refineries. Okay. And uh, yeah, the high impact polystyrenes uh, that are refrigerated liners and food packaging vending cups is made up of it's a high impact polystyrene and the polyurethanes and uh, polyvinyl chloride, the PVC for plumbing pipes and uh, cutting electric wire. All these are made up of PVC and polyvinyl chlorine, this PVDC that I mentioned, like the sarin. You can see uh, there is a slim kind of like you no know, plastic uh, which is like you no know, wrap over uh, the food actually. And acronitrile uh, butadiene searing, there is the electronic equipment cases like you know, the computer monitors, printers, keyboards, or the, made up of this material, like you know, acronitrile uh, butadiene searing. Okay, and uh, the po uh, poly epoxy, actually, epoxy is, is adhesive. Okay, this is used for like, like you know, electric components and, um, and uh, including like you know, making amine, amide, and boron uh, trifluoride. And the polymethyl uh, methacrylate, that is uh, acrylic materials, which is used for like acrylic paint. So those days, like you can see, uh, they used to advertise, like, no, so if you spill something on the uh, walls, uh, it won't get uh, like, you know, bind on that, or it will not uh, remain. So you can easily wipe it with the uh, water or with the clothes. So that, that kind of like, you know, paint is made up of this kind of polymethyl methacrylate, okay. And uh, polytetrafluorethane. And melanin, uh, melamine, like formaldehyde, and uroformaldehydes, and um, and uh, poly uh, poly three terkino, ketone, and uh, melamide, uh, bismelamide, polythermide, polymide, uh, plus charge material, polyactic, uh, pol uh, polylactic acid. Actually, this is one of the important material. Actually, this we are going to discuss, uh, especially for these uh, bioplastics. So most of the bioplastics come with is the polylactic acids uh, because it's a biodegradable and uh, we'll uh, discuss these things and they'll uh, let us play it's okay and furon silicon uh polysulf polysulfone and polydi ketone okay let's see what is the history of plastic okay the first uh, history uh, the the born of like you know uh, uh plastic in the year uh, 1712 uh, john o brissett most uh, snuff boxes from horn and uh, likewise on the age 23 the Macintosh uh, like uses rubber gum to waterproof uh, cotton, and uh, Mac is born. And uh, 1839, first delivered chemical modification of polymer produces organized rubber. And uh, shellac, actually, in 1854, shellac means wood floor pattern in USA for molding a material for making union cases. And yeah, 1850, a soccer ball uh, with uh, vulcanized rubber panels uh, glued to the seams, design produced with Charles Goodyear. And uh, yeah, so in the eighteen in the year eighteen eighty nine, Dunlop Rubber Company founded a motor industry revolution. Because uh, that's uh, that is uh, one of the most important revolution actually uh, invention actually uh, happened uh, in the motor industry. 
and yeah so likewise there are like so many um, uh, these things actually uh, 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 plastic uh, material inventions happen until 2007 uh, there was a Tate Britain Christmas tree decorated with a plastic air fix planes and also um, uh, nowadays actually the bioplastics are used for uh, constructing the uh, the airships uh, to go to Mars actually uh, that we I will show you like you know so what are the other uh, things actually used by the plastics not these plastics I am talking about the bioplastic okay so what are the application of plastics okay so mostly plastics used for like packaging uh, building and constructions automate automotive and electrical and electronics and also uh, like you no know, so for our uh, like household purposes okay okay let's see about the bioplastics okay uh, it is estimated since the 1950s approximately 1 billion tons of plastics have been discarded and uh, some of the material might have uh, present centuries or even significantly longer as it's demonstrated by the persons of natural materials such as amber okay so the reason for like you know the need for R of like you know bioplastic is because uh, so every year like as I mentioned like 300 300 uh, uh, thousand tons of like you know uh, 300 billion tons of like you no know, plastic that we are like you no know, using every year and among that 1 billion tons of plastic has been like you no know, discarded into the environment and probably some some uh, some uh, kind of like plastic uh, can be recycled and also be reused but most of the plastic what we does actually we are dumping in the uh, ocean actually that is uh, another one issue also like we uh, put as a landfill in near agriculture land or in near uh, uh, or near the, like uh, I could say like in fertile land also we dump all the, these plastics actually. Uh, so one of the biggest advantages of the plastics are the durability that is more important because like plastic we can keep it for long years and also the another problem is uh, that cannot be like you know the rate of degradation and uh, also the lifespan actually like you no know, so it exists in the environment for long years. So that is also the another issue. So one other issue, like you no, know, so we can keep the plastic for long years, and that one when you discard or like you no know, dispose the plastic, it is going to remain in the environment for like long years. Okay, and technically all conventional plastics are degradable. Okay, so we are talking about uh, degradable plastics, biodegradable plastics, but all the plastics are degradable, but uh, due to their slowdown, they are like you no know, considered as a non-biodegradable. Okay, but how like all the plastic will get degraded, but it will take. It, the lifespan of like every plastic is like different so it will remain in the environment for long years so based upon the uh, degrad uh, degradable uh, ability of the plastic it get degraded okay so so what happens the extremes of plastic became like you no know, very big issue so therefore like you no know, they are like researchers and also the people due to like you no know, environmental awareness uh, they want to start use the bioplastics okay so after the like you know the food and textile industries uh, that became like an organic trend. So you can go to any uh, uh, like you know uh, uh, big uh, 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 textile showroom. So they will talk about like you know sir, this uh, shirt is made up of organic. Uh, this uh, sari is made up of organic. Okay. So that kind of like you know uh, trend has been like you know fixed. And also people started what happened actually. Like, uh, uh, people also want to like you know, make a trend actually. Like you know, they want to make an wall actually. Uh, to really extend uh, because of like no extensive media attention although uh, current production wall is uh, of these bioplastics are like only one person as i mentioned so we are producing only one percentage of uh, bioplastic uh, for these kind of purposes okay so the bioplastic stands for bio-based polymers that is the exact uh, term we should use we should not say bioplastics so we should say it's a bio-based plastics okay according to iupac uh, a yeah, bioplast is derived from uh, biomass or uh, shit from monomers, uh, derived from the biomass and uh, which uh, at some stage in its processing, its finished products can be shaped by flow. So in general terms, actually, we can say a bioplast is a plastic that is made partly or wholly from polymers derived from biological sources such as sugarcane, potato starch or the cellulose from trees and stars. And also these days, uh, uh, bioplastics are made from algae. So algae is also one of the, uh, uh, because I know your professor, uh, Dr. V. Subramanian, uh, uh, he's having a research center at Chennai, Ananagar. So uh, so I have noticed actually, uh, when we are discussing about these things, actually he said, uh, bioplastics also can be made from algae. And I also made uh, some uh, references. I found actually, yeah, algae is also a wonderful resource. And uh, those who want to pursue their research in this kind of like area, probably they can uh, start like you know exploring uh, 
uh, algae for producing uh, different kind of like you know bioplasts. For example, any simple uh, like you no know, material we can like make it using the algae algae. Okay, so not only from the trees, also from algae. Actually, that's what I want to say. Uh, and some bioplasts degrade uh, in the open air because. Uh, uh, you don't want like add anything like uh, you don't want compost or you don't want like add anything so it will like you no know, uh normally it will like you no know, degrade but some they need to like you know compost in the industrial uh, area like you know, that need a uh, various kind of like a process so like uh, you need to add some fungi or you need to add bacteria or you need to like add any kind of like you know enzymes to like you know, enhance the uh, degradation process so but in general actually uh, it can like you know degrade very easily in the open air so you put it outside it will get degraded Okay, some biodegradable plastics may be of petrochemical origin. Okay, not all bioplastics are made from natural uh, things actually. Okay, so some biodegradable plastics may be from petrochemical origin. Therefore, a bioplastic is a plastic that is either bio-based or biodegradable or it can be both. Okay, so let's see what is bio-based uh, polymers. Okay, so... Uh, Bio based polymers means this is bioplastics. Okay, so uh, this is the exact term of bioplastics bio based polymers. These uh, polymers are found in naturally, uh, natural generally from plant and animal sources, and also you can include algae. And this may be, for example, starch, cellulose, proteins, or lignin that has a sexual functions for the plant or animal. Okay, so the bio based polymers are, can be converted, I mean, like, you no, know, uh, can be divided as uh, polysaccharides. Uh, proteins and the polysaccharides can be uh, and proteins can be from a plant origin and uh, animal origin and the plant origin is like a polysaccharide starch cellulose protein vegetable fats and oils lignin natural rubber and animal origin for polysaccharides can be chitin alginates xanthan gum and for proteins like plant origin can be wheat uh, gluten and uh, soy protein and animal origin for proteins can be from collagen or gelatin Okay, let's see what are the biodegradable bioplastics. Okay, so first let's see about starch base. Okay, so starch base, the free stock is from the corn or potato or wheat or tapioca. And uh, the raw material from this uh, free stock is uh, starch. And the properties of this uh, starch base is like, no, it has a low water vapor barrier and it's uh, poor mechanical properties and um, and bad in like, no, possibility. And uh, it is brittle. Okay, so it can like, no, break very easily. Uh, so the brittleness and the substitute for this uh, starch base, like you know, polystyrene. Actually, uh, we have uh, I have shown you, like you know. So this is this is substitute for the polypropylene, uh, polystyrene. <laughs> and the cell cellulose base is from the wood pulp. Okay, that is uh, the raw material is cellulose, and uh, the properties are low water uh, vapor barrier and uh, poor mechanical properties and pro uh, bad processability and also the brittleness. Okay, so this uh, cellulose base can be substitute for the polypropylene okay the for the pp and uh, polyhydroxy alkanoids actually pha or phb that is uh, from uh, corn potatoes maize tapioca uh, vegetable oils uh, the raw materials is again the starch and the ph is ranging from a uh, stiff brittle to semi rubber like because we need the brittleness because uh, uh, then only it can like you know, degrade very easily okay so we always want to be brittle and uh, uh, brittle to semi rubber like and uh, PHB has better oxygen barriers properties than both PP and uh, PET, uh, better water vapor barrier properties than PP and fat or other barrier properties that are uh, sufficient for use in food packaging. So yeah, so this uh, polyhydroxy alkanoids is, is for uh, food packaging actually. So this can be alternative to uh, plastic uh, polypropylene or polyethylene. For these polyethylene bags, actually, the, the, the carry bags which we are using, okay. And uh, the polylactic acid, this is the most important material. Actually, this is this is a widely used, actually, I guess, uh, some of, uh, among the uh, uh, 100 percentage of the bioplastic produce, actually. Uh, 40 percentage of bioplastics are uh, made, up, made from the polylactic acid. Excuse me. Okay, so the polylactic acid, uh, the feedstock is from uh, corn, uh, majorly from corn, and uh, uh, sugar beet, uh, potatoes, wheat, maize, and tapioca, again. And the raw material is lactic acid. So the lactic acid has high tensile strength and modulus. However, uh, its brittleness and low crystallinity led to low thermal stability and has limited application. But however, like, no, though it has a limited application, but uh, most of 
the bioplastics, like I said, mentioned, like out of 100 percent, like 40, about 40 percent of bioplastics are made up of this polyl lactic acid material. Okay, so this is the alternate to low density and high density polyethylene, like the LDP and the HDP, and for polystyrene, and again for polyethylene, tetraethylate, and polypropylene. Okay, so so far we have seen the uh, biodegradable bioplastic. Now we see about non biodegradable bioplastic. See, okay, so plastics are generally comprised of like you know carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and uh, carbon is completely partly uh, from the petrochemicals, as I mentioned here. Okay, these are non biodegradable. As I mentioned, uh, bioplastic can be degradable, biodegradable, or uh, non biodegradable, or can be both. Okay. So here, uh, this non uh the bioplast is made up, uh, use actually the carbon from petrochemicals. And um, the plastic is like, you know, uh, but how like, you, know, you can say it's non biodegradable there are like 100% biobased plastics, like you know, PLA, PHE, as well as the partially biobased plastics, okay? So here are the, some of the examples of uh, biodegradable, like uh, non-biodegradable plastic, bioplastics, okay? So the bio-based uh, polyethylene, that is a tetraphthalate bit, uh, sugar cane, the feed soil is sugar cane and uh, the ramel is sugar and uh, processed by fermented and distilled uh, to ethanol and uh, monoethylene glycol from bioethanol and the is come in with uh, purified uh, tetraphthalic acid and this application are for like you no know, plant bottled by uh, coke, the, the, the coca cola actually, the coke uh, or like any kind of like you know, water bottle, pet bodies, even like the drinking water bodies actually. So this is alternative to the bio-based uh, polyethylene is alternative to the uh, plastic, uh, the the pl exact plastic, okay, and bio-based polyethylene, okay. So, though it's a bio-based, it contains like you no know, some partially, okay, partly it contains carbon material from the petrochemicals, okay. Not hundred percent bio, bio, it's a uh, part is from the petrochemicals, okay. The carbon source, exactly the carbon source, like you say. Uh, okay, so the bio-based uh, polyethylene that is a uh, and again from the feedstock sugar cane and the bramble is sugar. Fermented uh, uh, well, distills to ethanol, dehydrated to ethylene, and uh, through polymerization, actually we get uh, the material. So the best examples are like you know, carry bags, uh, the film materials which is used for cinema, and also the bottles. And bio polycarbonate. Okay, this is a uh, feedstock from car corn, and uh, the raw material like you know isosorbide, and um, this is uh, made through hydrogenation of glucose to produce a sorbitol. And uh, isosorbate is obtained from a double dehydration of uh, sorbitol. Okay, so it is substitute uh, for high performance glass components, electronic equipment, automatic housings, interior and exterior decor. Okay, so this is the alternative for uh, to it made. Okay, and uh, biopolymerate uh, is uh, from castor oil, and uh, the raw material is like sebacic acid. The uh, dicarbous acid is like sebacic acid, part of a polyamide. Uh, is produced from renewable sources that is castor oil and uh, uh, this is mostly alternative to the electronics automotives and for sports okay so uh, so based upon the like the degree of uh, substitution so the the, the material the bioplastics can be like you no know, uh, difference into two types that is drop-ins and the non drop-ins and the drop-in plastics are non biodegradable materials uh, that are obtained from renewable or raw material that present identical technical properties to their Fossil counterparts, uh, uh, especially like you know, uh, non biodegradable commodity plastics such as uh, bio P, bio PET, or bio PP. And non droppings are like you no know, uh, materials that may or may not be biodegradable, uh, but uh, they don't have identical technical properties uh, to their fossil counterparts uh, that uh, they are into like you know, PLA, uh, PHA, bio PA, etc. So let's see what are the uh, bioplastic and the applications, okay? Uh, in search of like new metal solutions, as I mentioned, like now, so we are looking for uh, alternative to petrochemical plastics. Uh, uh, proceeding an eye on like you no know, goal of uh, sustainable production and the conceptions. Uh, bioplastics have like you no, know, like you no know, very good advantages actually. Uh, potential advantages. Uh, bioplastics can be processed in very similar ways to petrochemical plastics. So the processing of like you no know, both petrochemical and bioplastics was similar, such as injection molding, extrusion, and thermo forming. Uh, however, like to improve their tensile strength, bioplastic uh, bio polymers can be blended with their co-polymers or with other polymers. 
So here you can see uh, some of the bioplastics. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean biopolymer based uh, materials, uh, plastics. Okay. Uh, this is the range of packaging uh, or uh, made from like no biodegradable plastics, and the solar plast resins are uh, extensively used for like no manufacturing biodegradable uh, uh, packaging. Uh, and you can see here, these are disposable housewares are made up of biodegradable plastics. And this is a cutlery. Actually, this is a, if you uh, fly on flights, actually in the flights they used to uh, give this kind of like you no know, uh, nature where bio based uh, and compostable cutlery. And in the star hotels, if you have been, actually like you can see there's a uh, this kind of like a biodegradable hangers. And these hangers are from uh, United Colors Benetton. And also the biodegradable plastics are used in like you know, agriculture mulches and seeding stripes uh, here actually you can see and the tape made from viral plastics and yeah so here you can see the solar plast composable uh, films actually the materials and viral burial ports and the PLA golf uh, tee for like you know keeping a, a, a pin over there actually and yeah so here is a, a insorb absorbable skin stapler and uh, dissolvable medical screws, these are really dissolvable uh, medical screws uh, for promoting bone growth and absorbable anterior and posterior cruciate ligament uh, interface screw for ligament uh, prowl actually for especially for ortho, uh, ortho surgery, actually orthopedics actually they use this kind of like you know uh, materials uh, because uh, uh, when once it's fixed actually when uh, after a long time because mostly we used to get like you no know, orthopedic surgery with uh, uh, that uh, uh, stainless steel screws instead of that actually we can use this kind of screws for certain kind of purposes and also you can see is uh, absorbable like no orthopedic pin these are some medical purposes they use and uh, yeah guided tissue generation membranes uh, this is also for again for medical purpose and uh, trx uh, absorbable antibacterial envelope this is again used for uh, medical purpose and uh, paratex uh, pro grip laparoscopic surgery they use this kind of like no uh, this is a self fixating mesh actually and not only for medical actually also in the electronics actually here you can see bioplastic touch screen computer uh, casing developed in cooperation with the leading uh, Taiwan is uh, OEM ODM uh, consumer electronics and and again like you no know, consumer electronic products uh, Fujitis new computer keyboard and uh, Europe is a uh, zero eco edition using construct bioplastics Fujitis uh, biodegradable mouse and winter element case made from 100% natural cells for the phone uh, cases and covers actually and yeah biodegradable iphone case realized uh, with the epinet and uh, drum cover uh, this is a drum cover actually like uh, uh, ex for the xerox copy machine and the solar charger a zindo sunshine and the exit design uh, jincho solar tree so these are the some of the like you know uh, bio based uh, polymer made uh, plastics actually and also not only for um, uh, uh, like for like no household uh, and also not only for medical and also not only for electronics also these uh, bio polymer based plastics are used in uh, automobile industries actually here you can see toyota prius ventlor of sorana epp pt uh, polyester actually this is a uh, air conditioner actually the from the inside the car actually if you notice actually this is the air conditioner flow inside the, this one and here's a, a model car of like, you know, made up of bio-based plastics. Uh, the car model is actually like a Prius. Uh, the seat cushions, uh, scuff plate, cowl side trim, wrist uh, plates are made up of bioplastics. And Corolla seat cushions are made up of bioplastics. Matrix uh, seat cushions are made up of bioplastic. Rav4 is a seat cushion. Lexus, you might know the Lexus cars actually. The Lexus cars are like RX350 comes with us. Uh, Bioplastic, uh, I mean, biopolymer based uh, seat cushions, Lexus has 250 and Lexus CT 200. Uh, this is actually like uh, all the different kind of like car models. Actually, here you can see the materials, uh, different parts of the car with the bio based polymer made uh, uh, plastics. Actually, they use seat pads, tool carrier, luggage, uh, cuff, spare tire cover, skin. And the handling skin, visor skin, and those are all these things. So you can see the luggage uh, trim skin as well. Actually, everything is made up of mostly, actually, like, you know, so this car, I could say, like, around like 60 percentage is made up of uh, bio based polymers. Yeah, so here again, the PLA is for like the air filter box uh, in the car. 
and the interior trim uh, supplied by uh, Rochling Automatic. Okay, so what are the current end use of uh, segments of uh, bioplastic? Okay, biodegradable and short lived products. Actually, mostly the uh, bio based uh, polymer based uh, plastics are used for packaging. Uh, for example, uh, shopping bags, as I mentioned, shopper, that is the uh, carry bags, and compostable waste collection bags, like uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the waste actually, the garbages, which we are like now uh, for collecting garbages. And trays and pruners for vegetables, fruits, and mid eggs. Actually, the trays which is made for like you know keeping the vegetables uh, for growing and also fruits and also the meat and eggs. Actually, there's a specialist uh, that's uh, the place actually. And uh, disposable catering service wares like uh, using throw materials which can be like you know uh, degradable. And medical application like implants such as screws and uh, pins or plates for orthopedic surgeries. And materials for pills and capsules. Okay, uh, even like the the capsules is what you are taking. Um, uh, mostly, like you know, uh, comes with bioplastic because once you consume, actually, it should be properly digested in your stomach, and it should be excreted properly. So, most of the the capsules uh, covered. Uh, I mean, the capsules, uh, the medicine is covered with this bio uh, biodegradable, like you no know, uh, short-lived products and mulchfuls. Yeah. And non biodegradable and durable products like automatic internal, uh, like seeds, as I mentioned, okay, uh, headrest or armrest, uh, mobile phone cases. And, uh, and uh, I mean, recently, actually, there are like no uh, bioplastics are used for 3D printing and metallized biaxial oriented PLA films for like no food packaging. Baby products also come because, like, most of the baby products, uh, there were like no recent study has been conducted, I guess, in India as well as in China. Most of the, the baby toys comes with lots of like, you know, uh, toxic heavy metals in the plastics. So when the kids consume, they get lots of uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, digestive problems actually, uh, because when they, the kids used to put that in their mouth, so the lots of toxic chemicals get into their stomach and they get like, you no know, digestive issues. So uh, in, in order to keep that in mind, it will like, you know, there are like you know, the different kind of like, you know, uh, baby products like you no know, toys and teeth that have been made and modified PLA for durable like you no know, applications interiors and under hood like automatic parts so what are the few stock for like you know bioplastic we discussed earlier actually like you know, I have shown the uh, table column and uh, that you are seeing like you no know, sugar starch plant oil actually like, uh, castor oil actually so those things actually those things are like you no know, first generation uh, feedstock and yeah so so here you can see the first generation of feedstock or like you no know, uh, corn, wheat, or sugar cane, potato, uh, sugar beet, rice, uh, plant oil, and second generation um, feedstock for like bioplastics are like you no know, wood, short rotation crops such as poplar, willow, or miscanthus, and bistra, bagues, uh, corn cobs, uh, palm fruit bunches, uh, sweet grasses, and third generation as I mentioned like you no, know, so now like you no know, there are like, lots of uh, tremendous uh, changes are happening. And uh, now they are using algae, as I mentioned actually, like in the uh, previously. So the third generation now, researchers are looking into algae, which has a higher yield than first and second generation feedstock. However, this category still is in the development stage, and it also relates to bioplastics from like you no know, carbon dioxide or methane. So this is a wonderful uh, research area if somebody wants to like work it on. Okay, so what are the end of life of uh, these bioplastics? So what will happen if you want to uh, uh, use this bioplastic? Like, you know, plastic, we know, like the petrochemical plastics, what the end of life is, like, you know, it's going to remain in the uh, environment for long years based upon the degradable capability. It degrades because the lifespan of like every uh, petrochemical products, uh, plastics are like you not know, different. So, what will happen with these bioplastics? Like, what is the end life of uh, these bioplastics? What we can do after we use it, okay? So we can use it for, I mean, we can recycle it and we can use uh, for, I mean, like, you no know, re uh, renewable energy recovery from that. And we can do it through compost or biodegradation. And also we can do anaerobic digestion and also we can do the feed recovery. Sorry, feedstock recovery. So this is the more important actually, like, because we, these days we always talk about reduce the triple R actually, like, you no know, triple R we used to talk about the reuse, reuse, recycle. Okay, so let's see the first uh, reset. Okay. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. All right. 
thank you. Okay, so uh, first C actually the first R to the recycling. Okay, so bioplastic can be recycled, but uh, the recycling need to be done in separate streams actually because uh, we cannot like you know dump just like that. Should we should like you know uh, process in proper way. If degradable material enters the conventional uh, plastic stream and fully degrades in the recycling process, it may change the characteristics and specification of the conventional material is mixed with. That is a problem. So what happens when you do recycling? You won't get the exact uh, metal what you like. You no know, uh, supply during making of the bioplastic. So what happens that uh, the, the the exact character of the uh, the feedstock which you like you no know, used uh, so it can get changed. Okay, and also it will change any other like you know, conventional material, any petrochemical material that you are used that will also like you know get changed. So also if it is just not fully degrade, it may continue to do uh, so in finished recycled product, leading to premature failure. So what happens? So you cannot like you know, get in the uh, exact product or like the exact thing that you want like uh, uh, get it from uh, after the recycle okay and renewable energy recovery okay the incineration okay so when you do incineration obviously you'll get uh, any kind of like energy for example uh, thermal energy actually uh, so when you heat water so you'll get some energy from that okay similarly to like you know to in incineration okay energy recovery from plastics practiced uh, followed globally due to high amount of heat generated from it okay so they insulate this uh, plastic okay this bioplastic made from renewable sources uh, such as as i mentioned uh, pla polylactic acid uh, generally contain only carbon oxygen and hydrogen atom okay so this only contains uh, carbon oxygen hydrogen atom and especially do not contain any chlorine atoms that is more important because when when it contains chlorine so it is going to be like no more toxic actually because when it insulated actually obviously it's going to like no uh get into the air and like you no know, there will be air pollution again like you know the people those who are going to inhale those kind of like you know polluted air they'll be getting uh, uh they will be getting like you no know, serious health issues okay so as they do not like contain chlorine they do not produce dioxin during burning or insulation so that is the most important one so so the wonderful uh thing that we can uh, get it from the bioplastics when you are doing uh uh insulation is we will get the energy okay Traditionally, bioplastics also do not have any heavy metal. Okay, so that is uh, again a wonderful thing. Actually, when you are making bioplastics, there won't be any heavy metal additives. Whereas in the petrochemical uh, plastics, actually, so I have shown in the uh, the seven types of bioplastics. You have seen the first one, actually, like, you know the LDP, sorry HDP. Uh, it contained like you no know, different kind of uh, mercury. It was there actually, and also uh, there were other like lead was there actually. So this kind of like heavy metals used to like you know mix up with the petrochemical plastics to get into any uh, plastic product actually. Whereas in the biodegradable biopolymers, there is no heavy metal additive, so they are like you no know, very safe to like incinerate. So it's very safe to burn. Incinerate means burning. Okay, so it's uh, very safe to like burn with no danger of releasing dioxin or any kind of heavy metals. Okay. Uh, so how are like the biodegradability of the primary motive of bioplastic is energy recovery should be least preferred okay so we should not like to think actually okay so when you're get, okay anyhow like so when we do uh inspiration burning the bioplastic we are going to get energy so that is not going to be our uh i mean like uh, the objective of uh the triple r actually the renewable energy record okay so so it can be like you know very potential for other options such as like you know recycling compost or we can go for anaerobic digestion instead of going for incineration so we can choose these kind of like you no know, alternate like you know go for recycling Make into another product, or put it in the compost. It can get degraded, or if you put put in the anaerobic digester, okay, it will like you know get digested, and like you can recover the byproducts, and you can use it for any other things. Okay, so the other one is like in you know, a feedstock recovery or chemical recycling. Okay, during recycling, the bioplastic cannot only be melted, made into granules again for a new application, but in some cases it can be broken back down into starting chemical building block okay so what happens so uh the bioplastic okay it, it won't but only get melted but also it um, get into like you know, small pieces of granules okay uh, which can use it for like you no know, new application but in some cases it can be like you know um, used for like you know, again okay so for example as i mentioned the pla the lactic acid can be recovered from pla and can be again used for make pla resin this is also called chemical recycling okay and the another one is like compost or biodegradation. Uh, one must have a clear understanding of the product that has been certified biodegradable or compostable and the clear difference between the two. 
because the compost is different and the biodegradable is different. Okay, the composted product is always biodegradable. Okay, so when you compost any kind of like you know, bioplastics, it can be biodegradable. Yeah, biodegradable product is all, uh, is not always compostable. Okay, so it doesn't mean biodegradable plastics always compostable. Okay, so this is more important thing. Actually, one should like keep in mind. So let's see what is compostable. Okay, so the composted product must uh, meet a specific criteria in terms of uh, time, and uh, also it depends on the environmental conditions and how you are like you know uh, like you know forming the compost. Okay, and uh, like you know, what are the compost material that you are going to add. Okay, so many bioplastic products are designed to be compostable actually in in uh, in real. Okay, however, in many cases this compostability will only occur in the tightly controlled condition. You have industrial composting facilities, okay. Whereas the biodegradability is determined by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide released. Actually, that is a mineralization. Actually, uh, we can say mineralization, the amount of like you know CO2 produced over a certain time uh, period by the uh, biodegradable plastic. Uh, the standards regular like uh, at least like a you know, sixty percentage conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide within one eighty days of uh, for resins. Resin, it's a excuse me. Resin itself is needs like you no know, 180 days of uh, a degradable time, and uh, like you no, know, and also it should like you know, convert 60 percentage uh, from carbon into carbon dioxide, and uh, and some like you no know, resins made from single polymer and 90 uh, percent conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide for copolymers or polymer mixes, uh, whereas like you no know, the polymer or copolymer mixes, uh, that should be 90 percent conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide. There is no recommend for leaving a non-toxic residue as well as no recommend for the time it needs to take to but so the deal time can be like you know uh, many uh, many days not only 180 days it can be like you no know, uh, more than 180 days and the last one is the anaerobic digestion uh, this method is used for like you no know, uh, waste from biodegradable plastics uh, in biogasifiers okay so biogasifiers like where we put uh, some the plastic material to convert into useful methane uh which is like you know used for uh uh you know like methane gas is like uh, always used for kind of like uh for industrial purposes it's also practiced by a very small scale at present actually because uh, uh because it's not like uh used in i mean like you know, done in the large scale the anaerobic digestion of like bioplastic has a great scope uh, if it is like you know, combined with compostability uh leading to more efficient waste management okay so so it should like you know go or not the anaerobic digestion first like you know should be done the composting after composting if you go for like you know uh anaerobic digestion probably this kind of management is like you no know, uh, the time duration okay uh, so here is you know you can see so 180 days actually when you do the compost compost is like aerobic okay uh, while composting it's going to be aerobic and if some materials don't get degraded then you can go for i mean then the second step after composting you can go for anaerobic digestion so so the the time duration of like no uh, kind of like conversion of the material the bioplast is uh, going to be uh, in shortest period of time okay so what made uh, these bioplastics to like no grow actually yeah so why the bioplastic interest uh, over this year uh, for the uh, uh, for alternative to the petrochemical products is uh, the reason is the consumer prefer uh, toward environmental friendly products because the uh, people uh, nowadays actually because of lots of awareness what happens people want the consumers people the consumers want to find eco-friendly products okay and the use of renewable and bio-based raw materials because uh, when you use this kind of like the material uh, bioplastics it can be re renewable and also like no it's going to be bio-based raw material and the biodegradable is really good and government policy toward green uh, green procurement even this conference actually uh, what dr hemapriya is loud is uh, with the support of uh, Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology, just because the government policies are like getting changed, because they want to find some alternative to the petrochemicals. Though we cannot like go for 100% into like you no know, our petrochemical uh, uh, plastics, but how like you know, we can think how we can like you know utilize bioplastics and uh, how we can like develop new bioplastics uh, from the algae, actually third generation uh, bioplastics. So this uh, conference is obviously you know, going to like give and like you know idea of what is bioplastics? How the third gen bioplastic can be uh, developed? Actually, that is going to be the core idea of this conference. Actually, okay. The two most important commercial biopolymers are, like now, as I mentioned in my the first slide, is actually uh, polylactic acid and starch-based biopolymers. 
And yeah, so the, the polylactic acid uh, constitute uh, 47 percentage, whereas the starch constitute 41 percentage of total biogravid polymer consumption, actually. So, so these uh, both material are like, you know, commercially used widely, okay, uh, for uh, biopolymer based plastics, okay. So, so one can think about like, you know, how to get uh, the polylactic acid from the algae and also one can find like, you know, so how to get uh, a starch metal from like, you know, uh, some good algae, like when you like, you know, isolate, you can try to like, you know, find some different uh, resources from the marine base uh, to get these two products or you can find like some other like, you know, uh, bio, uh, plastic metal as I mentioned, like uh, in the uh, uh, biodegradable plastics, uh, there are like, you know, uh, five starch base and uh, corn base, actually we have seen those things. So similar kind of like, you no know, products also you can think and you can like come up with some novel ideas because even government of India wants uh, uh, young researchers to come up with some startup ideas to like, you know, develop some new technology or come up with some uh, novel products uh, to, uh, to uh, I mean, like to our Indian community. Okay. So one can think about like how to do this kind of research in India. Okay. So mostly bioplastics are used in, uh, uh, used as bags and also used in agriculture and horticulture and uh, used uh, in disposable housewares and uh, using medical devices and uh, consumer electronics and also automated, which was mentioned before. And, okay, so now we want to know, okay, so bioplastics, okay, fine. So we have seen about uh, the research, uh, like what are the types of bioplastics, how, like, you know, we can, what are the resources for the bioplastics? I mean, the field stocks for the bioplastics. Now we can see what is the market trend for this bioplastics, okay. Okay, so now actually, uh, we, as I uh, we discussed, like I told, uh, the currently bioplastic represents only one percent out of three million tons of plastics, that is petrochemical plastics, produced annually. Okay, uh, but uh, the demand is rising with more uh, sophisticated materials and application and products emerging. The market already growing by uh, about uh, twenty two hundred percentage uh, uh, per year. Okay, so uh, because it's one person now is like you know, slowly like you know coming up area. Uh, according to the latest market data compiled by European Bioplastics, uh, global production capacity of bioplastics is predicted to quadruple in the medium term uh, from around 1.7 million tons in 2014 to approximately 7 point million tons in 2019. In 2019, their production was 2.11 million, uh, 2.11 million tons, of which 44.5 percent were bio-based or non-biodegradable bioplastics, and 55.5 uh, percent is biodegradable bioplastics. Okay. So uh, this is the old data. Actually, however, like, so you can see the gradual like an improvement from uh, uh, from the year 2040. Actually, the 2014 was like 1.7 million tons, uh, whereas in the year 2019 it was like no increase to 7.8 million tons. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the uh, like you know the production uh, like you know the market trend actually like, you know uh, I mean in the European bioplastic area actually it's not from uh, it's not global one. Okay, the global. Uh, Global capacity, production capacity is more, but like how are the, the European plastic, like, no, they compare the data actually. Okay, so in 2024, actually, the bioplastic production is expected to reach 2.4 million tons, actually. Yeah, so it can be like impossible, but uh, because of uh, uh, lots of awareness uh, among people, uh, people like, no, start uh, uh, going for like, no, a renewable, sustainable. Uh, things actually, not only uh, the plastic, even like in you know, water things actually, like even the eatables also, they are picking up like, you know, so how to go for organic and all those things. So how are like, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in future actually, like, there will be lots of uh, changes going to happen. Okay, so what are the uh, uh, important uh, uh, motives actually, what are the drivers for the bioplastic market growth? Okay, so there are like a different kind of like drivers actually, like, uh, which drives the accelerating growth of the bioplastics uh, 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 market, uh, okay. Uh, the first one is the mandates and regulations, and um, it's again the increasing eco awareness among the consumers, and corporates also becoming more focused on sustainability. Yeah, because earlier the corporates want to make money, uh, like you can see the most of uh, like you no know, uh, the uh, drinking water bottle companies, uh, they use uh, like you no know, the toxic uh, pet bottles, and which uh, like you know they don't because uh, earlier uh, some countries now they made a, a regulation like uh, so if you are making a pet bottles, if you are supplying drinking water, you should take back the plastic, actually the pet bottle back and recycle it and like, you know, reuse it. So what happened is the corporates are also like, you know, becoming okay. So because that is going to be uh, a profit loss for them because once they given, actually it's sold actually. When they're getting back and doing the recycling that uh, the running cost will be like you know, higher. So they they always think actually alternative for the 
the thermo um, like sorry uh, the uh, the petrochemical based uh, uh, plants so now actually they going the most of the corporates they are moving to sustainability they want to like you know find uh, some now new, a new uh, novel uh, bioplastic which can be used for uh, regular use and also the technology stabilization actually the technology is getting developed and also to cut off the cost reduction as i mentioned okay once the plastic is thrown and recycled reused that is going to be like no it's not the cost effective so so the bioplastic is going to be all okay so once you use and throw it in open air it will get degraded if it's not still it's degraded you can go for composting even if it's not getting composting also it's not getting degraded then you can go for anaerobic diet so you do have like options for like you know degrading the bio i mean like you no know, uh, recycling the uh, bioplastic and you can go for uh, incineration of as well actually for like you know because uh, if you do incineration it's not going to affect because uh, it's not containing any kind of like you know bioplastic not containing any kind of heavy metals so also it has like very less carbon material okay and so what are the challenges uh, in front of uh, bioplastics are the uh bio plus like no uh critical change before the actual large scale market for penetration because uh, they are much more costly than conventional plastics because uh, making of this uh uh, uh bio plus are more expensive than the petrochemical uh, uh plastic because it be two to four times as costly depending on the product and uh, upstream technology is still evolving and hence there are like uncertainties in the technologies and process uncertainties present in post use processing and uh end of the life of uh, life options for bioplastics and substitutes obviously you know some of them authentic and uh, some uh, not to uh, not so authentic substitutes also present competitive challenges to adoption of bioplastics in many uh, mainstream markets and again the customer awareness a number of misconceptions result in a poor or sometimes fa faulty understanding of the market resulting in delays in investment and decision making that is also another challenge for the bioplastics but it, this these things will be easily to overcome because this is not going to be a very big uh, stuff the only thing is the uh, making cost so that is uh, two to four times the cost here than uh, this uh, i mean like the conventional petrochemical products plus okay so okay so so once you want to like you know have the bioplastics what are the uh, standards and certification that you need to get it uh, well actually i'm not going into detail because there's almost a I took one hour. Actually, like, I will go very quickly. Okay, so bio uh, bioplastics are not readily distributed from regular plastics. It is necessary to prove a mechanism ensuring uh, ensuring their quality and labeling. Okay, so this is done through uh, standardization standardization certification system. Okay, so there are like you no know, different kind of uh, bodies which give the standards of like you no know, making these bioplastics uh, because they need to examine, for example. The, there are like no um, uh, ASTM American Society for testing and materials using. So according to them, they give the uh, standard of ASTM D six four O O. A compostable plastic is defined by standards association ASTM International ASTM. A plastic that undergoes degradation by biological process during composting to yield. Doctor Ali. Yes. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption. You have lost your slide. Can you please? Sorry. You have lost. We could not able to see your slide. How long? <laughs> yeah, just just now. Just now we lost it. All right. Okay. So how right? So I'm going to have like uh, yeah. two more slides. I'm going to complete my presentation. Yes. Okay, is it visible now? Yeah, yeah, now it's All right, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So, okay, so yeah, so these are the, some of the uh, standards actually uh uh for the American uh for for especially for USA. And uh, again, like no so not only for USA, there's a international uh standards. So, one should have the ISO 17088 uh, uh, to uh, 2012. Okay, the, there are like the four allowing aspects uh, or address on compostability. Based on the compostability, only they are giving the, this uh, the standard. Okay, so compostability means like how it's getting uh, degraded. That is the most important. Okay, yeah. So based upon the compostability, the first one is the biodegradation. Okay, so how it get degraded? That we need to prove to get uh, this ISO 17088 uh, 2012, and also disintegration during the composting. And uh, what are the negative effects on the composting process and uh, facility? 
and uh, what are the negative effects on the quality of the resulting compost, uh, including the presence of high levels of regulated metals and other harmful components. Okay, uh, based upon these uh, uh, qualities, the categories, actually the qualities. So uh, the biopathogens can get this ISO one seven zero eight eight twenty twelve. And for again, like you know, so we have seen the Europe uh, American and also the for international standards. And now we are going to see for the European Union. According to European Union, they have a EN one three four three two compostability standard. Okay, so this is based upon the chemical test, uh, biodegradability, uh, disintegration, priority test of compostability, and uh, ecotoxicity test. Actually, like you know, so, so based upon these categories, uh, they are giving that is SEN actually, like you no, know, the European Committee for Standardization. Okay, certification. Okay, so they're in the Europe, like you know, there are like the two independent organizations there. Excuse me. That is uh, Dean Setco and uh, Wincott. So uh, these are the two independent organizations. They give uh, 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 certificate uh, certifications uh, for bioplastics, and um, yeah. So and certified composite plastics are also issued by biodegradable products. Okay, uh, Institute BPA USA and um, Japan Bioplastics Association (JBPA) Japan, as well as other less widely used organizations. Okay. So one should like you know uh, go for this kind of like certification in order to uh, come up with the herbal plastic in the market. Okay, so yeah, so this is a conclusion. Okay, so I'm going to give my conclusion. The ever increasing environmental pollution that caused like you know so various uh, uh, products from the petroleum base uh, that is a uh, petroleum based plastics, uh, conditioned depletion of fossil fuels, and because like now we can see. Lots of like you know fossil fuels are like getting depleted, and uh, we need to face the conscience. So we need to go for like an you know, alternative way. Uh, so what happens? The bioplastics uh, coming with the like you know alternative to these uh, petrochemical uh, bioplastics uh, for its safety because it is easy in uh, degradability and uh, reusability and production from uh, bio-based materials. And uh, here I sum up uh, actually my presentation. Okay, bioplastics are renewable and uh, suitable alternatives to petroleum-based plastics. And currently, the main operations for bioplastics are the packaging metal. But in future, bioplastics may be used more in higher value applications like in electronics and vehicle parts. Bioplastics have a 0.1% share of the current global plastics market. And uh, land usage of uh, the production of bioplastics is currently small. Uh, that is 0.1% of used maize area for PLA production. And implementation of the current uh, disposal methods and corresponding infrastructure are vital. If the bioplast industry is to uh, flourish and like you know, deliver environmental benefits, bring awareness and uh, ascending growth of uh, bioplastic for, uh, for industries has uh, helped in filling the lacuna of like using bioplastics by the consumers and has successfully encouraged researchers to build technologies for a uh, portion of bioplastics. Okay, uh, with that I thank you everyone. And uh, this is a conference which I'm organizing uh, from January 24 to 26, 2021. This is all about second conference in environmental agriculture, chemical and biology sense. And uh, so this is organized by my audience, Voice of Indian Council for the Environment, along with the Murray State University, Murray Kentucky USA, and Department of Biotechnology, Yale University, Mathura, Uttar Pradesh, Department of Zoology, Mercy College, Palakkad, Kerala, India, Department of Environmental Science, at DM College of Science, uh, Dhanamanjuri uh, University, Impal, Manipur, Department of Biochemistry, Wells University, Chennai. And uh, if anybody interested, they can uh, send their abstract and we do have PPT and post presentations and one can log into this uh, link actually. Uh, if you are any questions, I am ready to take and uh, if you have any doubts, you can also write it to me uh, regarding the uh, uh, regarding bioplasts or anything like for anything related to research or academic, you are free, free to use these uh, contact details to reach me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. It was a very nice. It was a very nice and informative lecture. We all thoroughly enjoyed your lecture. Participants, if you have any queries, doubts, you can clear. You can clear with Dr. Rajesh. Uh, you can ask me or type in the chat box. I'll be 
uh, yeah, able to ask. answer. Yeah, you can ask you, in chat box yeah, also. Yeah, you can type in chat box. Yeah, please type your questions if any questions are there. Yeah, we got one question. Whether we can use bioplastics instead of plastic? From Raghavendran Ushashri. For kitchens. Yes, yes, yes. As I mentioned, the Saran, you know, Saran, S A R A N, Saran. That is uh, uh, plastic, actually, which we use to cover the food material for refrigeration. Also, use some plastic to, uh, in the uh, microwave oven. Okay. So, so bioplastics uh, can be also as I mentioned, actually, there's a PLA, polylactic acid based uh, materials can be uh, alternate to the plastic for the, especially for kitchenware. And, uh, I will show you again. Is my uh, face visible? Is my screen is visible? Uh, no, it's not visible. Uh, like only we could able to see your photograph, Dr. Rajesh. Not yet. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah there, 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 there are possibilities to like you know um, uh, use uh, like you know uh, the bioplastic alternative too for the kitchen there. Yeah. The, the research on toxicity in lichen pea have been studied. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, um, these uh, bioplastics are uh, have any kind of like heavy metals. So, any data uh, toxicity is uh, only because of the heavy metal that you are going to use it. And uh, the toxicity will come. The toxicity will come once you like, you know, burning the uh, the materials actually. Uh, through that only like, you know, again, the toxicity reach to us. Okay. So the both the things are not in the bioplastics because uh, you're not going to use any kind of heavy metals in the bioplastics. And second one is like, you know, you're not going to, uh, like, uh, I mean, when you insert it as well, actually, you're not going to have any kind of like toxicity through them. So yeah, obviously you can do the toxicity studies as well. You know, you can use any kind of material that you're excluding from any kind of uh, biogenic material, biogenic like uh, plants, or it can be like animal source, or it can be from algae, or it can be from microorganisms, like, you know? So you can like, you can uh, change, uh, I mean, like you can do the uh, uh, toxic test actually once you got the material. You can go for a HVLC or a GC. You can find like you know, what kind of like materials are present in the bioplastics. I mean, the material which you isolated. From that, you can like, you know, check uh, whether any kind of like toxic material are present in the, uh, the isolated the material actually. Okay. You can, you can do the evaluation very easily uh, to find like, the toxic, anything is present in the, in the material. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our plastics are harmful, especially for toddlers. Uh, using uh, feeding bottles, uh, feeding uh, bottles instead, can we go for bioplastics? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you can go for you know bioplastics because, uh, as I told you, because there are so many resistance has been done using plastics and uh, especially toys or any kind of like as you mentioned the feed, feeding stuff. Uh, you need to find. Uh, you need to uh, buy a quality one because. I have shown you actually uh, this slide actually different kind of like materials are made up of the plastic is made up of different kind of materials. Okay, so you just any plastic material you take, you can check. Okay, so here I have a bottle. You can see the bottom there. It is written as PET. Okay, similarly, what are the plastic material that you like, especially for kids, uh, for babies? Actually, you just have a bottle like the bottle. Have a look at material is made up because the every plastic carry this uh, the symbol there's some types of plastic I shown, right? so every plastic should have carry uh, this one even computer also carry and uh, even um, uh, your like you no know, uh, what is the printers okay printers everything every plastic must have this uh, the the symbol actually okay? with that you can find out what kind of like uh, plastic metal it is how much toxicity it is based upon that you can choose your material Uh, any plastics are harmful? Okay, so I answers for this actually. Yeah, many are using plastic for multiple. What is toxic level? Yeah, uh, it depends actually. Like as I told you, the toxic level depends upon the plastic material that you are using. Again, 
So what are the, uh, for example, if you're going for a shop, actually, uh, any any package, for example, these days, many people are making their products from their home. Actually, they make uh, some pickles, they pack it, and they send it to you. Actually, they put it in a bottle, actually, but they don't know actually what kind of plastic they are used, okay? Even you don't know what kind of plastic you use. What happens, they use, they use the vinegar to like you know, uh, keep it, uh, the pickle for long time storage. What happens when the vinegar is there, actually it's acidic, when it mixed with the, the some low quality plastic, okay, what happens? There will be some chemical reaction happens. So when you consume it, obviously you'll get toxicity. What, what you need to do is, what are the products that you're buying in the shops? You just please have a look of the material of the plastic bottle or the plastic container, what is kind of, uh, uh, what type of like plastic it is. Uh, there is a, I have shown you the seven types of plastic. You can Google it, you'll find out based upon the toxicity uh, level of the plastic and the components of the uh, metals used for making the plastic. You can choose the uh, bottle, whether you want to like, you know, buy the uh, buy the, uh, the pickle or any kind of like, you no know, store, I mean, like the packaged food, you want to buy it or not. What are the extreme performance of bioplastic in raw matter? Uh, Example, temperature, pH, react. Yeah, I told you, right? Like the, uh, this bioplastic are very uh, brittle, actually. Like, uh, how to say, I uh, hope you uh, tasted the um, uh, the starch uh, uh, rice uh, paper, actually. Was, uh, we call it rice paper, I guess, like, you know? When you chew it, actually, it will, like, you know, will be very brittle. So it is very easy to, like, break it up. So it, it, need, it need not, like, you know, high temperature or, like, you not need to, like, uh, uh, apply, uh, uh, like, use a high pH. To like you know uh, degrade it. Uh, what is the beneficial role of bioplastics using agriculture field? Yeah, so bioplastics, as I mentioned, actually like uh, uh, for example, drip, uh, the drip, like you know, uh, uh, the water, like you know, using for the uh, agriculture practice, the dipping system, so, like you no. Know, so they used to keep uh, some plastic bags actually, some plastic bags that like you no know, leave it. I mean, it will be there, but anyhow, it will like you no know, uh, make some issues in the agricultural soil. So these bioplastics uh, can be like you no know, uh, replaced with those plastics, and it will what happens? It will compose easily with the soil, so the soil won't be get any kind of like issues. Also, the microbes which is there in the agricultural soil will also happily live and also will support your agriculture yield. So because the soil is like uh, uh, microbes are more important in the agricultural soil, right? So uh, when you use like a different kind of uh, I mean like uh, the uh, petrochemical uh, plastics, so there will be some mineralization will happen because. Uh, some more like the palinia bacteria actually for example if you take palinia bacteria mostly palinia bacteria like they plays a, a vital role in the like you know degradation of any kind of like you know um, uh, plastic or any kind of like uh, organic material is present uh, in the uh, soil so what happens the mineralization rate will like you know change and also that will affect the agriculture yield so, so instead of like you know going for the petrochemical based like you know bioplastics uh, you can go for like the you know, plastic in, even in the agri field or biological plastic in in food packaging. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, so there are biological plastics which is uh, used, uh, which are used in like you no know, food packaging. There are many. Like there are many. Uh, are they? Lignin has been incorporated into many biopolymers such as starch, protein, cellulose, PLA, and PHB to form biopolymers. Sir, what are the application of lignin? Lignin again, actually, like you know, uh, lignocellulose actually. Uh, that is more easily, for example, for composting. As I said, for composting, we are using fungi. Uh, for example, lignocellulose are like uh, a lignin is easily degraded by the fungi. So what happens when you use lignin kind of like you know uh, bioplast? It's easy for you to like you know compost because most important part is because uh, uh, other petrochemical uh, plastics are not degradable, right? Because it contains like different chemicals, petrochemicals. Whereas the uh, uh, bioplastics that is lignin made is like you know lignocellulose, lignin uh, degrading uh, uh, fungi are there, so they are very easy to like you know uh, uh, like you know break these kind of like you know bioplastics. I mean lignin based bioplastics, so you can like you know reuse it or like you can compost it in the soil. It's, you don't want to do any kind of like processing, even just to, like, throw it in the air. There will be lignin uh, degrading back uh, fungi will be there that will be like you know, easily degrade the uh, lignin. I mean uh, the bioplastic made up of lignin, so. It's very easy. Any other questions? It's a wonderful question, actually. Like I like uh, Sreechan question because yeah, so lignin uh, actually is uh, degraded by uh, fungi, like no, uh, 
lignin uh, degrading fungi are there uh, because uh, lignin only uh, fungi is a, a wonderful uh, thing to degrade lignin any more questions from the participants okay so no, there no. are no yeah thank you very much and i uh, thank you uh, the organizers especially Hamma Priya ma'am because uh, I want to thank her because I'm just seeing her after like uh, 20 years. Uh, <laughs> many of you doesn't know she like uh, uh, she was my teacher actually when I was doing my uh, undergraduation. Uh, I think uh, in the year 2001 she was like teaching me microbiology. Can and, I guess? Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah. So I'm seeing her after like uh, 20 years and uh, it's really a wonderful opportunity for her because you know, like, uh, it's really uh, feel happy when you, like, you know, uh, show uh, your presentation in front of your teacher. So I have, uh, I really honored, uh, uh, thank you, ma'am, thank you very much. And also I thank uh, uh, the uh, management of uh, DKM College of uh, Women, College for Women, actually. Like, uh, I thank the principal and also the managing, uh, I mean, like, management for giving this wonderful opportunity. Also, I thank uh, the sponsor of this conference. Uh, Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology uh, for sponsoring for this uh, international webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for like listening my presentation. I'm giving my email ID in the chat box. If you're having any doubts or something you want to reach me, you can write it to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, same thing here also. I'm very happy to meet you after a very long gap. Uh, it was a very nice presentation, and I'm very proud of you, really. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for sparing uh, your uh, valuable time with us. Hope we'll uh, meet in uh, some other occasion uh, like this. Okay. Yeah, thank you thank so you, much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, now it's time to start the second lecture. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to invite Vidya Ma'am to introduce our resource person, Dr. V. Bala Subramanian. To the gathering. I'm happy to welcome you all. I feel happy in welcoming Dr. V. Balasubramanian, sir, Assistant Professor to Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University, Chattishkar Raipur, who readily accepted our invitation to grace this occasion with this guest speech. I once again welcome the heads, faculty department, faculty members, research scholars, and students from our own college and from other colleges and universities to the second lecture of the day. Once again, welcome you all. Thank you. Now I feel happy in introducing Dr. V. Balasubramaniam to you all, the participants of the webinar. Dr. V. Balasubramaniam, sir. Uh, at present, he's working as an assistant professor, Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University, Chhattisgarh, Raipur. From May 2002 to June 2003, he worked as microbiologist in the as water quality controller in Kabila Food Industries. From June 2004 to April 2005, he has completed his MSc and submitted dissertation on plant stress physiology in October 2005 to. Uh, November 2006, uh, Senior Research Fellow in UPA SIT Research Institute, Valparai. From June, July 2007 to March 2010, Project Fellow, uh, UGC India. Worked on project entitled, Influence of Seasonal Patterns on the Production of Compote Tissues in Ophiorhiza Mungos, a high-value anti-cancer medicinal plant. <coughs> From April 2007 to June 2012, he has completed his PhD degree. And from October 2012 to February 2013, he worked as Scientist D in Envis Center, Department of Zoology, University of Madras, Gindi. From March 2013 to June 2015, uh, he has got postdoctoral fellowship uh, from UGC. And from July 2015 to June 2018, uh, the Young Scientist Project uh, funded by DST Serb has got many honors and awards. Uh, uh, the 
won in 2017 is the best young researcher award by GRABS Educational Charitable Trust, Nanganallu, Chennai. And in 2015, the young scientist DST SERP funded by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. And in 2018, Dr. D.S. Kothari Postdoctoral Fellowship Award and uh, SRF from the CSIR, Government of India, New Delhi, India in 2011. He has filed patent uh, in silver nanoparticles, functionalized tyrosidine hydrochloride, a new antimicrobial complex for the management of skin wound infections. He has, uh, member he has got membership in many professional bodies uh, like IIMAR, uh, GRABS Educational Charitable Trust, Biotech Research Society of India, and Indian Science Congress Association. So I welcome you, sir. Uh, I kindly request you to take over the session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your nice introduction. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the principal, ma'am, as well as uh, my senior, Dr. Hemapriya, ma'am, uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present my research work. Uh, just a minute, I will start my presentation. I hope everyone can see my PPT, I hope. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, I, I really very happy when I when I hear the words from uh, principal ma'am. Uh, ma'am ma told about the plastic free campus. It's very really happy. Uh, ma'am is maintaining a good campus plastic plastic free campus. Now, now we are facing so much of uh, problems due to the heavy usage of plastics and the pollution caused by the plastics. Uh, as in the in the previous lecture, we have we have seen about the types of plastics. What what types? Uh, what are the kinds of plastics? And uh, what are the usage of the plastics? Uh, then we have, we have seen about the bioplastics and how we can we can get the uh, get the approval international approval for the for the for the trading of bioplastics. Yeah, it, it was nicely explained by Dr. Rajesh. He is also one of my one of my batchmates during my PhD work. I am happy to see Rajesh, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, you you gave a wonderful uh, wonderful lecture. Thank you, thank you so thank you, much. Thank you. You reduce you uh, reduce my burden to explain different types of plastics. Uh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you, thank you, Nice to see you after long years. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much. And we I should thank Ham for this. <laughs> it has become a big <laughs> forum. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma thank thank you. Meet you all after a long time. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank actually, you. Actually, actually, yeah. Dr. Rajesh reduced my my burden to explain what uh, different types of plastics here. Uh, uh, I, I want to explain uh, there are different types of plastics available, right? Available in, in the world. Actually, it's a synthetic plastics, right? Synthetic plastics means it's a man-made products, right? It, it, it has been ne never, never it's synthesized or never synthesized by the microorganisms or any other biological system. So this is the synthetic product synthesized by man, human being right so this kind of plastics never exist never exist in our in, in our ecosystem so this is the this is the am i audible ma'am am i audible yes yes you are audible sir you are yeah, audible thank you ma'am thank you yeah. thank you yeah. so there are different types of plastics available one is uh, polyethylene terephthalate that is pet bottle we are we are using for the drinking purpose PVC pipes, right? We are uh, we are using for the water transport, right? Uh, from the tank to the tap, right? And uh, uh, polyethylene, polyethylene, polystyrene. There are different plastics, synthetic plastics. Out of these plastics, I'm I, I'm really interesting on high density polyethylene, right? This is also yeah one of the plastic which is helps to make a carry bag, right? Previously, Dr. Rajesh explained about the carry bags. It's made up of uh, low density polyethylene apart from the low density polyethylene high density polyethylene also used for the especially 
especially high molecular weight high density polyethylene which is used for making of plastics why we are using the plastics because of it is low cost it having a chemical resistance it having a hydrophobicity right and due to high uh, high tensile strength high tensile strength it means you can carry you, you you can see it is just it's a just a microgram weight right it's having a just 1 gram of polyethylene it can you can carry more than 5 kg more than 10 kg of material inside the carry bag that much of tensile strength it having right so it is it is highly flexible and it is durable and it is light weighted due to this we are using the polyethylene right plastics that that is why we are we are highly attracted you can easily you can carry without uh, uh, if if you are if you uh, if you are carrying the plastics uh, carry bags it is very very light weighted right the even though it is having a light weight it can carry more than 10 kg of weight inside it so that is why we are highly attracted attracted to the plastics it is uh, you, you 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 might have seen wherever you are touching in your home right nearly 8, 70 to 80% of material is made up of plastics so that much of plastics we are using right we can directly we can shift from shift from the synthetic plastic to bioplastics but we are we are generating right now we are generating nearly right nearly generating 270 million tons of plastics it's a production right it's a production alone right nearly nearly 31.9 million tons annually we are producing a waste plastics dumped in the hostel area right so this much of plastics we are yearly we are producing we are generating the waste right even some of the countries they are not using the virgin plastics they are importing the used plastics and that will be molded for some molded and molded into different forms and used to buy the by the consumers so in order to avoid right so we can convert it into bioplastics production of plastics plastic material we can we can produce from the biological sources but what happened to used plastics the waste plastics tons and tons of million tons and tons of plastics we have used and we have dumped in our earth what will happen right how you can treat for how you can remove the air, the waste plastics from our environment right we are telling that we are telling that the plastics causing pollutions how it causing pollutions here you can see the scenario how it's how, how much we are consuming right here i have mentioned right i have mentioned pet bottle right pet bottle as well as here i have mentioned the polyethylene polypropylene pvc right here the polyethylene is a major major consumers right we are the major consumers of polyethylene that much of polyethylene we are using so so much of waste generated out of other plastics if uh, for example pet bottle you can recycle the plastics we can reuse recycle when you are recycling it won't reduce the reduce the quality of the plastics but when you are recycling the polyethylene right it will reduce the plastic quality right you can see right so many shops uh, now nowadays you can see the black color plastics carry bags right that is the last recycled plastics you it have the very less tensile strength right that that's why we are wherever you can see the black color plastics pla plastic carry bags it uh, you, you can carry only less quantity of the material right that's why that's why i'm telling here i'm i'm really interested on the polyethylene degradation you can see why we have to degrade right why we have to remove the plastics from the environment right here you can see the marine animal right marine animal marine animal it it is exposed right it is exposed to the plastics it, this is a net right this is the fishing net it trapped it trapped by the by the fishing net so so what happened here the cattle cattle is uh, mistakenly eaten the plastics and it blocked the digestive system it choked the digestive system what happened it cannot eat further due to that it will die right so we are now we are in the second generation of the plastic waste right 
we are initially we are we are we, are, we, are, we were thinking about the the larger size of plastics we are dumping now we are in the second generation of the plastic degradation here you can see the way plastic waste dumping as a microplastic and nanoplastics right naturally the dumped plastics what happened no due to the sunlight and temperature the plastic natural weathering is happening right natural weathering is happening due to that it will become a smaller smaller particles it's in the micro mag, microplastics and nanoplastics recently two days back i read an article even our human placenta right the placenta carries the microplastics and nanoplastics you can't imagine right the placenta right it's inside our body right it is a it is a tissue right connecting the mother and and child right in the womb you can see you can see the how much of plastics it causing the pollutions now it's the microplastics nanoplastics it's enter into the into the food chain right we are daily we are eating the plastics in the form of micro and nanoplastics so our government taken the effort right our government taken the effect to prevent the plastics right prevent the usage of plastics i'm re i'm i'm very much uh, very much uh, very much observing the government acts right instead of instead of uh, preventing the usage of plastics our government he, he would, have, would have taken the production of plastics to stop the production of plastics that will be the right decision but even though we can we can reduce the usage of plastics right so here here the now we are in the second generation we are get we are eating the plastics with our food materials micro nano plastic particles so what what happened while you are using the plastics right what will be the solution for dumped plastics so far right first one is landfilling right what will happen during the landfilling it affect the soil nature it affect the soil nature soil fertility right and if you, the water cannot percolate percolate the soil when you are dumping dumping the dumping the soil dumping the area with the plastics it will affect the groundwater system right so it is it, it this landfilling it's not a right method for removing the plastics or dumping the plastics so second method burning incineration right incineration when you are incin uh, burning the plastic it will it will release the toxic gases right it will release the toxic gases like methane right nitrogen nitrogen oxides carbon monoxides right which causes the asthma and heart diseases to the human being so this is also a not right method for for the solution of solution of plastic pollution then we cannot throw it into the ecosystem nowadays we are doing no we are just we are we are we are taking the plastics carry bags and we are throw it in the ecosystem right just like that we are throwing right if you are throwing into the ecosystem even even our land animals right uh, terrestrial animals like cattle right unknowingly eaten right and also aquatic animals terrestrial and aquatic animals mistakenly eating eating the plastics right it it block the food uh, digestive system digestive system so it leads to the death so this is also a not a right method right then another method recycling right most of the plastics like pet bottle we can recycle but like uh, polyethylene it cannot be recycled it can you can recycle but you cannot get the get the equal quality of the when compared to virgin plastics virgin polyethylene right you newly synthesized to polyethylene so it can, it don't have a quality so we we need a quality but it should not affect, affect our environment so this is also a not off method so what will be the right method so microbial degradation it's a right method right we can enter into we can we can use the microorganisms to control or to degrade the polyethylene right it it is a eco friendly method to control or you can you can degrade the polyethylene material it, it won't cause any the by products of the degraded 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 polyethylene it won't it won't release any any toxic material after the degradation into the environment it is easy handling microorganism you know you know you are, we are we are producing so many materials right food materials 
we are we are uh, we are we are indeed in uh, industrially revolu uh, revolutionized uh, with the microorganisms right so many products produced by microorganisms right so we can use the microorganisms to degrade we have the only one solution for the for the plastic uh, removal from our earth our mother earth that is right word mother earth right now we are we are we are dumping so much of plastics in the in in our mother earth right so microorganism we can use right this is a my interesting area right uh next next half an hour we are we are going to discuss about the polyethylene degradation by the microorganisms right how the microorganisms doing the plastic degradation first we will see the structure right first we will the structure of polyethylene right this is the monomer right this is the monomer of monomer of polyethylene uh, right ch2 ch2 that is c2h4 right the two carbon two uh, four hydrogen it is having a double bond in between the in between the carbon right in between the in, in between the carbons when you are having a long chain of long chain of monomers ethylene it become it become a linear polyethylene it may be branched or non branched it depends on the material right i am i am working on high density polyethylene and there are other types right low density polyethylene right low molecular weight low density polyethylene high molecular weight uh, high density polyethylene there are different types of polyethylene in, inside the polyethylene classification right i am only working on high molecular weight high density polyethylene it having a it having a high density right that means the polyethylene density the ethylene molecule highly densed with the with the package with the pack right it's highly densed so you can see the bond between the two carbon right the length of the bond between the two carbon it will reduced so it is highly den highly densely packed right so due to that it is very difficult to break down it is very difficult to break down that is the reason why polyethylene it's having a resistant to degrade by the any means right so when when increase the density the bond length will become reduced the length between the carbon it will become reduced so the bond become the strength of the bond it it will increased so it become very difficult to break down the carbon bond right so let me see one by one right How, why the polyethylene become a become a non biodegradable in the environment it is a synthetic plastic right it is a new molecule to our mother earth no ever see no ever seen right never ever seen the chemical chemical composition by our biological systems you can see here and another one is it is a high molecular weight the microorganisms or any organisms cannot taken into the cells right inside the cells there are so many enzyme systems enzyme machineries but outside the cells there is no enzyme machineries right here it is a hydrophobic in nature this is a major major uh, important points hydrophobic in nature most of the chemical reaction start with the hydration process hydration and oxidation process here if the molecule excuse me if the molecule molecule is not a, uh, not a hydrophobic uh, hydrophilic in nature the water cannot react with the molecule right so oxidation it will not be happen and hydration it will not be happen so it reduce the degradation degrading ability of the any living system and it so it, this is a new compound to the our mother earth so there is no evolutionarily there is no development of any enzyme machinery right in the microorganism or any organisms so there is no biological enzyme enzymatic system enzymatic machinery in the In 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 our biological system, so it cannot be degrade, and there is no active group in the polyethylene. Can you see any active group here in the polyethylene? It only hydrogen, right? The hydrogen molecule joined with the carbon, right? What are all the active groups? You can see there is a amino uh, amino group, carboxyl group, hydroxyl group, ester bonds. There are there are so many molecules, right? So many active groups, but can you see here? No. there is no active groups 
our enzyme system right our enzyme develop our enzyme system developed with the active group binding right you know that there is a active site in the enzymes every enzymes it can bind with the substrate but if there is no active site how the enzyme can act on act on the polyethylene so these are all the major points the the plastics can cannot be degraded by the by the microorganisms now how we can we can enhance now the microorganism the, the microorganisms are very clever microorganisms are very very clever than human being it can easily adapt to degrade it can easily adapt because because it can it's a smaller organism it can it can easily mutate it it can easily mutate it from one generation to another generation right out, out of 1 lakh cells now we are facing the covid covid situation covid 19 it become covid 20 another strain one, one is developed every 1 million million cells generation out of 1 million one cell, one cell get mutated so it become a new strain so likewise in the evolution of the microorganisms once it get adapted trying to adapt it to the particular environment right it started producing the enzyme machinery right so in this based on this based on this concept i started i started working on polyethylene degradation i have collected so many so many places i have collected so many microorganisms from our tamil nadu right uh, here you can see i have collected the partially degraded polyethylene materials right these are all the materials there are different factors the abiotic and biotic factors te like temperature uv radiation from the sun right okay do you, right these abiotic factors started or initiate the biodegradation right initiate the biodegradation later on the microorganisms started degradation on the plastics right so i have collected collected the polyethylene material right partially degraded polyethylene material from the various places right various places especially corporation cities you can see how much we are dumping here chennai city it's uh, it's like a like a mountain right like a mountain we we have we have dumped right we have we have dumped we are dumping the plastics even seashore also rameshwaram i have collected uh, collected a few a few samples from the rameshwaram right in the sea coastal areas it's covered with the plastics instead of sand right instead of seashore it's covered with the plastic dumped plastics tons and tons of plastics we are dumping every day right so after that i have after that i have isolated right i, I have isolated uh, 72 bacteria and 33 fungus from from all over tamil nadu right out of which i have selected one bacteria and one fungi for for my further studies right here i am going to explain explain about my research experience and and my results right okay so after that here i have started in the initial stage the microorganisms having the ability to degrade the polyethylene up to uh, nine percentage of maximum uh, with the bacteria six percentage with the fungi right so only nine percentage of degradation remain remind this word nine percentage right with the bacteria six percentage with the fungi right so it is a very very slow process it is very very slow process how we can enhance so we have to enhance the degradation process initially it was six percentage and nine percentage right i have isolated organism and i have identified the organism as a enterobacter jergovia that is a bacteria right which is having nine per, uh, nine percentage of degradation fungi that is uh, aspergillus terrace which is having having a six percentage of polyethylene degradation ability right so how we can increase the polyethylene degradation here first one is we have to optimize the process we have to optimize we have to in we, we have to optimize in the optimization process what we have to do we have to change the media composition right we media composition media composition it, it may be a nitrogen source it may be a it may be a phosphorus source you know that carbon hydrogen oxygen phosphorus sulfur right sulfur and hydrogen these are all the six elements major elements for survival of any organism in the earth right carbon source we can give as a as a polyethylene as a sole carbon source in the medium for the degradation 
all all other source we have to provide for the survival of microorganisms right in the basal medium basal minimal medium mineral medium malt extract medium minimal medium uh, minimal salt medium these five, these six medium we have used i have used the six different medium for enhancing the polythene degradation right and another way of method we, we i have followed the pre treatment of high, high density polyethylene by physical means right by physical treatment chemical treatment and with the with the microbial treatment right there are there are different uh, different treatments i have followed physical treatment i have taken heat treatment that is to increase the temperature right and uv treatment right uv treatment as we we have already discussed heat and uv treatment it's a abiotic factor which initiate the polyethylene degradation right and another treatment also chemical treatment that is kmno4 hcl right when you are adding the this molecule this chemical compound it will produce co2 right it will it will the the polyethylene become very brittle in nature so easily it will degrade the but it will produce co2 right and chlorine chlorine it's resistant uh, it, it is which is which is used for the killing of microorganisms so we cannot use the used as a used as a chemical treatment and citric acid right we have taken a i have taken a uh, mild acids for the degradation purpose what are the parameters i have taken here for for confirming the polyethylene degradation first one is weight loss ftr analysis then viability of the mi microorganisms uh, in the in the biofilm right biofilm in the sense it's a polyethylene it's a thin film right any material any material any any surface the microorganism first start a biofilm right making a biofilm right making a biofilm then over over the surface of, or, or the surface of the polyethylene right then started degrading of the polyethylene right after that another one parameter that is a very important parameter that is sem analysis scanning electron microscopy for the surface modification because we cannot see we cannot just like that we cannot degrade the polyethylene if it will become in, in, uh, invisible or it become 100% degradation we cannot see right after degradation also we can see the piece of plastics piece of polyethylene inside the medium right so here we can observe these are all the parameters right right i will i will explain you one by one right first one is the weight loss right out of different different medium we have we have observed the minimal medium right uh, that is the that that is the that is the medium that is a mineral medium with uh, we have we have used i told you there are different mediums we have used basal medium basal minimal medium mineral medium malt extract medium minimal medium and minimal salt medium right when when we are using the six medium here out of six medium we have seen the mineral medium right it give the high amount of degradation high amount of weight loss right so it is increased up to 15 percentage 16 percentage you can imagine right initially the bacteria it was it was 9 percentage after the optimized process it will up to 16 percentage it increased right and in fungi i have observed the basal medium right here here i i have seen i have noticed this uh, in this method in the optimized method i have noticed the urea i have i have added that uh, for the for the initial growth i have added urea as a carbon source right urea you know that urea as a carbon source as well as nitrogen source right urea it contain two amino group with the carbon right two amino group with the carbon right so it act as a, the urea act as a nitrogen source as well as carbon source so it is for the initial growth of microorganisms i have added just one percentage one percentage in the medium right one percentage in the medium so it is very very low amount when compared to the polyethylene right first of all we have to increase the growth of microorganisms in the medium when increase the biomass the activity will be high right if we have, if i left the urea in the medium or any any other carbon source in the medium what will happen the organisms the initial survival of the organism it will be the question mark whether it will grow or not we don't know so we have to give the initial 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 growth we have to give the some small quantity of carbon source for the initial growth increase the 
increase the biomass then we can expect the degradation right then here i have observed the mineral medium as well as basal medium to support to enhance the polyethylene degradation then ftr analysis why we have to do the ftr analysis that is four uh, that is four year transform infrared spectroscopy you might have seen the seen the uv visible spectroscopy right uv road, uv radiation in the spectrum right here it is a ir spectrum which is used for used for the active groups right used for identifying the active groups in the media uh, in the polyethylene or any sample right in the any sample i have already told you right initially the polyethylene it don't have any active groups but after the degradation once the degradation started by the microorganism right microorganism the functional group changes is started right that is the initial stage of degradation that is the initial stage of degradation when the functional group is added to the polyethylene that it mean that it the microorganism started the degradation process that is here i have mentioned few parameters like keto carbonyl keto carbonyl bond ester carbonyl bond and terminal vinyl bond and uh, internal double bond index and crystallinity of of the polyethylene here carbonyl bond c double bond o right c double bond o right the carbonyl group which is binded with the ketone molecule that is keto carbonyl bond ester carbonyl bond that is a ester compound ester molecule ester molecule which is present in the polyethylene which is added with the carbonyl uh, carbonyl bond right carbonyl group which is added by the microorganisms right so we are here in the ftr analysis we are analyzing the carbonyl bond for for initiating the degradation process right why we are choosing the carbonyl bond instead of amino group or hydroxyl group right the carbonyl bond which produce right which produce a produce a free radicals right which produce the free radicals which can help to degrade you know that free radicals radicals it is a highly oxidizing agent right for example hydrogen peroxide right hydrogen peroxide right as well as superoxide right superoxide which is which is having a having a oxidation ability act as a free radicals the free radicals it can react with the any molecule and which degrade any any uh, any uh, any complex molecule right any any uh, any bond right so the, this carbonyl bond which produce a free radical right when the microbial attack is started it the free radical which degrade the near nearby the carbo, uh, carbonyl bond which degrade the bond which is nearby the carbonyl bond so when the initiation of the initiation of the degradation is started the microorganisms added adding the carbonyl group amino group for the enzyme action right for the enzyme action here you can see you can see even though even though it reduced the carbonyl bond right here the here this is before treatment i have analyzed in the optimization process right the carbonyl bond index is varied you can see when the this is the comp, the gray color which is showing which is showing the control then this is the brown color which is showing the treatment right when compared with the treatment you can see how much variation is occurred right so it it is it is started degrading right started started degrading and initiate the process by conforming with the ftr analysis right and and once we have started uh, we we have we have analyzed with the optimization process first we are initiating with the first we are testing with the normal organism right which is having a 9% and 6% of degradation ability then we are starting the optimization which is increased up to 16 and 15% of degradation ability by the bacteria and fungi respectively then again we want to increase further more by by the pre treatment process by the pre treatment by uv treatment physical method physical treatment by uv and uv method and heat treatment or we can use the chemical method potassium permanganate and hcl and citric acid with the with the microbial treatment whether it is it is possible to increase 
the degradation ability let me see here there are there are different combinations with the different different uh, uh, different treatments i have mentioned here bt1 that is bacteria treatment one bacteria treatment two like up to 14 treatment here fungi that is you have fungi f1 ft1 that is uh, here i have noted with the with the with the with the short form that is ft1 uh, starting from ft1 to ft14 right and there is a consortia with the bacteria and fungi i have used right with the different treatment right P, uh, pf right bacteria fungi treatment 1 to bacteria fungi uh, treatment 3 with treatment without treatment i have mentioned and i have uh, bt1 as used as a control right without any treatment including bacteria as well as any uh, fungi as well as any other physical and chemical treatment right here i have increased right i have increased up to 15 uh, 16 to 15 per, so percentage we are increased from the 9 to uh, 9, 9 and 6 percentage so that much of weight loss we we, we have observed when we are we are, we are treating with uh, treating with uh, with the physical and chemical method as well as in the optimization process also we have seen that we have seen the uh, seen the increase in the weight loss as well as here you can see you can see the carbonyl bond right keto carbonyl bond for the bacteria and fungi you can see here the treated one right when when the treated one is increased right when the treated one is increased the carbonyl and uh, keto carbonyl bond and ester carbonyl bond we can observe that there is a treatment right here the gray color it which is maintained the controlled one right and brown color which is maintained the treated one you can see here the btf here you can see the carbonyl bond index is very high it added the carbonyl bond carbonyl group right carbonyl group in the in the plastics right pf13 right that is alone bacteria and fungi alone it can start adding of carbonyl group in the polyethylene right here also same same thing we have observed with the fungi bacteria and fungi we have we have when we are adding right the the ester carbonyl bond index also very high in the in the bacteria and fungi fungi treatment that with the consortia right that is called consortia right and terminal vinyl bond that is that is double bond right the double bond where it is in the terminal region or in the inside the polyethylene we have to see inside the polyethylene or it, it it's outside the uh, or in the terminal in the in the end of the polyethylene having a terminal terminal double bond so when the polyethylene when the polyethylene is started with the degradation of my by microorganism it will increase the double bond right it will increase the double bond we can see the same pf13 pf13 treatment which is give the high amount of in uh, vinyl bond right vinyl bond that is a terminal vinyl bond is a double bond index right and also here you can see observe observe the uh, double bond index inside it is very low right inside is very low that means the process is started from the terminal region the degradation of the uh, degradation of the polyethylene which is started from the terminal region in instead of inside instead of mid of the polyethylene right so crystallinity also increased when compared to other treatment bf13 uh, bft3 it's having a high high crystallinity level right and also i have checked the viability right viability why we have to check the viability you know that uh, when you are when you are uh, the available carbon source is reduced right i told you the initially we have to give the urea as a carbon source for one percentage we have to add right so after depletion of urea what will happen the microorganism there are there are different possibilities right there are uh, different possibilities one is the microorganism can utilize if the microorganism able to utilize the polyethylene it will it will start to degrade the polyethylene if it cannot degrade the polyethylene it will die because without carbon source the microorganisms cannot possible especially especially uh, the without carbon source the microorganisms cannot survive it will go for die right another thing if it is start utilizing the the polyethylene material it will be survived there are two possibilities one is it has to die or 
it will start degrading of polyethylene if it is if it is cannot start degrading the polyethylene it will die then the polyethylene degradation would be happen so we have to check the viability in the viability in the biofilm after starting of biofilm formation whether the microorganism viable or not there is a, a different method one is uh, the method is called uh, live and uh, live dead assay live dead assay if the microorganism is viable the cells it's expressed as a green in color if it is dead it it become uh, it become reddish in color right here we are using agridin orange right agridin orange and ethidium bromide for 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 uh, identifying whether it is a live cell or dead cell right here here you can see all the samples right all the samples all the treatment you can see it is greenish in color the all the cells in the green in color right you can you can't find red so all the cells are viable in the in the biofilm right in the in the biofilm so the microorganisms are viable and it started the degradation because i told you the abiotic factor also involving the degradation process right it initiating not continuing the degradation process but the microorganisms if it is survival it started degrading of polyethylene right you can see the fungi fungi also started degradation you can see the viable fungi the mycelial growth right in the mycelial growth over the polyethylene on the surface of the polyethylene here the mycelial growth with the spores right with the spores we can see right all the fungi and bacteria which is viable viable inside the biofilm so the here we are confirming we are proving the concept our hypothesis the microorganism started the degradation of polyethylene if it would have if it is in a red color the microbial degradation is not possible not possible right so here we have observed the viable cells in the in the inside the polyethylene then another parameter we have chosen sem analysis right here you can see the corrosion started right corrosion started in the polyethylene right where i have marked marked with the yellow color right marked with the yellow circle when compared to control you can see the see the corrosion by corroded by the microbial enzymes here you can see bt10 treatment it having a high corrosion right high corrosion in the in the in it it, it started chopped into a small small pieces of polyethylene right and here also it started started the degradation process in the polyethylene polyethylene chains right here you can see here there is a corrosion started by by stem analysis we can we can see the polyethylene degradation it's it's chopped into a small small fragment then only the microorganisms it can uptake and the long chain alkane right into the into the cells otherwise otherwise it cannot degrade right it cannot degrade the polyethylene it has to uptake uptake into the cell then will then then only the carbon molecule it will it will reform right it will reform or it will it will used for the energy production right it will use for the energy production right if it is in the outside of the cells how it will produce energy you know that the respiration process right respiration process and etc electron transport chain right so once the molecule it has to and uh, uh, chopped into a small pieces right sisted into a small pieces then only it will uptaken into the cell i already told you one of the parameter that is the high molecular weight it cannot be uptaken into the cell the 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 microbial cells it is a micron in size how it will take a high molecular weight bigger size bigger size polyethylene into the cells so it has to chopped into a small pieces then only it will it has to uh, enter into the or it had it has to uh, it will uptaken by the microbial cells right after that when we are we are starting with the starting with uh, with the with the in in, uh, in vitro test right we are starting with the in vitro test we have to end with the in vivo test that is environmental degradation we have to check how we can enhance the degradation as well as as well as we have we have to uh, we have to use use the microorganisms in the environment how we can use right here we have used the different treatment with the 
here in the bt1 that is controlled one here the sand as a bed material right sand as a bed material we have used right and here i have used the sand that is a sterilized stand right sterilized uh, sterilized one right here bt2 that is a cow dung cow dung as a bed material for the degradation the sand mixed with the cow dung then bt3 that is vegetable waste which is mixed with the sand with the bacteria tyb1 is a bacteria which i have isolated the strain that is a enterobacter jergovia tyb1 right and bt4 it's mixed with the sand dust saw dust right it is a saw dust mixed with the sand with microorganisms bt5 that is a sand and microorganisms alone with the plastics with the polyethylene the same way i have taken the fungal fungi also right with the with the fungi mf12 that is a aspergillus terrace right that is fungi i have isolated right and i have main, maintained the triplicate right i have maintained the triplicates in r1 r2 r3 triplicates i have we have maintained we have to check the result consistency results right here this is the open winter composting model i have developed right here in the in the sand it's mixed with the with with the sand sand mixed mixed with the cow dung vegetable waste sawdust right these are all the bit material i have used right in the open winter uh, composting model right so we have we have increased right i told you first we are started with the 69 percentage then in the optimization and treatment process we got the got the treatment degradation up to 16 15 16 percentage we have started in the environmental degradation when we are adding adding with the bed material here you can see the degradation right started degradation corroded by the microorganisms after the degradation i have found this much of corroded and partially degraded polyethylene right the polyethylene the bacteria which able to degrade up to 25 percentage in three months you can't imagine in the environment it's a 20 percent 25 percentage of degradation we have observed by the by the isolated bacteria and fungi it is 23 percentage we have observed so this is the this is an interest we started enhancing the degradation of degradation process right here we observed the same right here in the B5 treatment, here you can see the corroded material. There is a hole, right? In the polyethylene material, when compared to control, right? When compared to BT1, is a controlled one, right? When compared to control, you can see BT5. It's showing the showing the degradation, corroded places, right? You know that the SEM, right? The scanning electron microscopy, it it observed in the only the in the in the nanometer right in the it, it observed in the nanometer size right here when when compared to the control you can see ft4 and ft5 it's showing the high degradation right high degradation of polyethylene right high degradation of polyethylene you can see the corroded the surface area is corroded by the microorganisms right so after this experiment we found found a mechanism right some of the experiment I didn't include here, right? I didn't include here. So what will happen? The polyethylene, the microorganisms started producing enzymes, right? One is extracellular enzyme that is polyethylene deep, deep polymerase, which is which is corroded or which is started degrading the polyethylene material and chopped into the long chain polyethylene, which is chopped into a small, small fragment, right? Alkane and carboxylic acid, which is uptaken by the bounded membrane bounded enzyme right membrane bounded enzyme which is after you enter into the, the alkane molecule it is looking like a alkane molecule it is looking like a uh, fatty acids right carboxylic acid and fatty acids right if it is uh, enter into the if, if it is uptaken into the microbial cells it's enter into the beta oxidation process that is fatty acid degradation process right after that complete degradation it will enter into tca cycle enter into tca cycle after the tca cycle you know that it will enter into for the energy production etc electron transport chain right and it will produce co2 as a as a end product 
right? We have found this mechanism by the GCMS analysis. Here I didn't mention in the present in my presentation, right? Here the round. Now we are starting the research work on which enzyme is involved in the degradation process and which gene is responsible for the degradation process, right? So another part we have, we have started, right? This is, these are the one area we are starting research work on that polyethylene degradation. And another part is how we can increase the biofilm formation on the surface of polyethylene, right? So in the polyethylene, once the biofilm formation is increased, it, it started degradation. The, the degradation process also automatically increased. Right. So these are all the works we are we are doing. We are currently concentrating on my uh, in my lab. Right. And thank you. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity for uh, explaining my research work. And also I'm welcoming you all for the discussion. And most importantly, I want to tell you that don't underestimate the power of microbes. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Bala. Delegates, any uh, participants, any questions? You can ask Please. Dr. Bala. Yeah. Even you can post your questions in chat box. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Be, be uh, feel free to ask more questions, right? Don't think that you are asking silly question or uh, very simple question. Question is the questions, right? So you can ask any type of questions. Actually, uh, one of the one of the candidate participant, uh, Avinash Agu, he, he asked uh, the polyethylene, right? Polyethylene, I am I, I am using using only commercially available polyethylene, right? We are facing the problem with the commercially available polyethylene. Our government it's only allowed allowed only six micron polyethylene, right? Allowed only below uh, above above six micron, right? Above six micron polyethylene. As well as, uh, so we are using the polyethylene thickness, right? It's a above six. We are currently working on 40, uh, 40 micron, right? 40 micron thickness polyethylene. Any other questions? Actually, some of the worms. Uh, which is started eating larvae or uh, larvae is a part of life cycle, right? Part of life cycle in the insect. Uh, we could see the some of the larvae larval stage, uh, which is which is started eating the plastics, right? Which is uh, I want to hear one, one point one thing here. I want to explain, right? The larvae it can eat, but it cannot degrade by the larvae by itself. The in, the gut floor of the gut flora, uh, flora of the uh, larvae, which is started degrading the plastics, right? Any other questions? Yeah, here is one more question, sir. Yes. Can mm. we add synthetic enzyme? Yeah, so far, so far we are not started with the, any synthetic enzymes because, because plastics, you don't have any active groups. So it's very difficult to define, define as well as uh, produce a synthetic enzymes. But currently, currently uh, we are we are uh, we are targeting on increase the biomass. So the microorganisms naturally adapted to the polyethylene, which can synthesize naturally, uh, naturally synthesizing enzyme, which is able to degrade the polyethylene. Synthetic enzyme is uh, now it's not possible 
we have to work on that any specific bacterial species have high potential degradation process yeah uh, actually there are there are a few organisms it's not up to the up to the mark that's why we are not introduced into the uh, industrial level right we are we are uh, here we are in in my, my organisms the isolated organisms like uh, enterobacter jergovi and uh, fungi aspergillus terris which is having a 20 percent, 25% of degradation right so the microbial degradation is very low right very slow process right that's why we couldn't uh, we, we couldn't started any industrial process for the for the degradation of polyethylene so far we didn't actually uh, one of the groups from the from the, the the collaborative work from the uk and us they have isolated the uh, polyethylene terephthalene polyethylene polyethylene terephthalate degrading that is pet portal degrading and degrading bacteria right but uh, the polyethylene degradation it's very difficult so there is no efficient organism so far isolated right so we are working on that uh, okay uh, sorry to interrupt uh, bala yes yeah actually like, um... Uh, there is a bacteria from actually they are using in Indian Oil Corporation Limited. Uh, that is Oilovirus. I don't know the exact name of the bacteria. They are using that bacteria for uh, degrading uh, petrochemical products. Yeah, petrochemical uh, products, some, but not someone, with someone the polyethylene. Can... Polyethylene. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably like you know. So that can be a possible of like you know because I I think they are using uh, because plastic is made up of uh, petrochemical products. Like, yeah. yeah, that is can a possibility. Kind of... Yeah, there is a possibility, but there is no evidence so far. No papers, no articles uh, have been published. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If somebody wants to explore that area, there is a bacteria called Oilovirus. Uh, you can put the Oilovirus Indian Oil Corporation Limited (IOCL). I think yeah. a few years, few years ago, actually, uh, I have came across this uh, uh, Oilovirus, Oilovirus, which can degrade uh, pH. I think petrochemical related products. Probably somebody can like you know if you want to explore, probably do as a, your research work, or you can like you know try to like uh, find similar kind of uh, uh, bacteria, which can do uh, as a uh, balsamic said actually it can work well. You can yeah, so far there is no any report or authentic uh, report from uh, any journals. Yeah, any yeah, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, we can start if somebody wants to explore. Yeah. yeah, 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 we can explore. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, doctor, for your valuable points. Yeah, any thank other you. questions? Uh, participants, uh, delegates, any other questions you can post in the chat box or you can uh, um, ask us an open question. Yeah, I think uh, we can find out uh, any more questions. Like, uh, if there are no questions, I think we can uh, go to the, move on to the next uh, part of the event. Thank you, Dr. Bala. That was really a wonderful session. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. It thank was you really so a mind blowing lecture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for uh, uh, to both of you uh, sparing your wonderful time. Uh, again, it has become like a small <laughs> get together for all of us. It was nice yes, sharing your uh, knowledge with uh, our students as well as uh, many delegates. Uh, thank you very much. So now we have come to the end of the international webinar 2021. Now it's time to propose a vote of thanks. All is well that ends well. Behind every successful event, there is the toil and effort of many people. Without a word of appreciation to them, no event is complete. As the organizing secretary of this international webinar, I feel honored and privileged to propose a vote of thanks in this wonderful occasion. I take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to each one of them who have overwhelmingly supported to make this event happen. At the outset, I'd like to thank our honorable president, Mr. Shivkumar, sir, and respectful secretary engineer, D. Maninathan, sir, of DKM College, 
for women for their invisible hand of support behind every successful event organized by us. I also extend my sincere thanks to our beloved principal ma'am, Dr. P. N. Sudha, who is, who is a guiding light and has been constantly supporting us with our time, energy, and applauds all our efforts. I wish to express my thanks and warm regards to Dr. V. Balasubramanian and Dr. Ramaswamy Rajesh for their gracious, gracious visual, pres virtual, virtual presence and wonderful informative lecture. I take this opportunity to register my sincere thanks to Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology who had patronaged this international event with their financial support. I place on record my deep sense of gratitude to all the faculty members, academicians, research scholars and students from various institutions for their overwhelming response and enthusiastic participation in this international webinar, webinar 2021. I would, I would like to sincerely acknowledge the unwavering support extended by Dr. A. Vidyamam, Head PG and Research Department of Microbiology, and thank her for her continuous encouragement and motivation at, at every point of time in the organization of this e great event. An event of this magnitude cannot happen overnight. It requires meticulous planning and execution. I have been extremely fortunate to be able to draw upon the willingness support of my colleagues, Mrs. S. Aruna Devi, Mrs. A. Bharati, and Mrs. R. Sangeeta, whose initiative and involvement at every step and made the task easier. My sincere thanks to Mr. Satish and Mr. Nagraj, who rendered the back-end technical support for this event. I also thank Mr. Ramesh for his excellent coverage of the event. I wish to express my profuse thanks to the non-teaching staff and supporting staffs of DKM College uh, for Women Unaided and would like to thank and congratulate the research scholars and students of Microbiology Department, DKM College, for their team teamwork. Thank you one and all. Thank you, delegates. Uh, the delegates, uh, the participants who are uh, who have participated participated in the YouTube live stream, uh, you can uh, we will be sharing you the YouTube I mean uh, the feedback link uh, very soon. Uh, uh, we will be sharing the YouTube link link through our uh, I mean uh, the feedback link uh, for the registered participants through the mail. So you can check your mail. We will be sharing the link very soon. So you can uh, fill the form and you can send it so that you can get your participation certificate. Uh, this is for the registered participants who are participating in the YouTube live stream link. And uh, uh, we have given the uh, feedback uh, form link here in the chat box. So uh, the participants can make use of uh, the link and you can send the feedbacks. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Yeah, can I respond to you?